You're quiet. I'm thinking. You aren't still upset, are you? I'm not upset. Like I said, I'm thinking. Hiya. Come in. I'd have never have worn this dress if I'd known it was yours, honest. She's right. It's Jason's fault. Uh, who gave the dress to Jason? Oh, and my fault. Half mine. Mostly Jason. I don't know why men think they can buy clothes for women. <laughs> Me neither. Well, I've learned my lesson now, haven't I? Do you want the dress back? I mean, you'll probably need to take it for dry cleaning if you want to try for a refund. No, darling, you keep it. It fits you beautifully. Just not for work, eh? So! <clears throat> Am I forgiven, then? We'll see. Mm, that'll do for me. I'll see you later. Yeah, 11 o'clock, on the dot, two cabs in the county ground. It's in the book. Danny, it's in the book. Have a happy new year. Bye. Right. Close your eyes and hold your hands out. What are you doing in here? It's a nice surprise, Steve. Go on, do it. Look, I'm tired and I'm busy. Well, I'm not leaving until you close your eyes and you hold your hands out. There you go. You can open them now. What's this? She lunch, cheese and pickle, chewy fruit bar and a couple of tomatoes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where do you think you two are going? Upstairs. What for? Listen to music, play on my computer, maybe read. All right, all right, go on, but don't forget, we're down here. What's that meant to mean? Just behave yourselves, all right? We always behave ourselves, Mr. Harris. You winding me up? Taking a notice of him, come on. Beautifully handled, Thomas. Well, I just don't know what's going on with them two. What is that? Unless I'm very much mistaken, that is a stench of death. Stench of death? Mm. Very popular with the young people, so I'm told. Do you want me to see it? No, 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 no. Keep an eye out. <clears throat> Might be here to cause trouble. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Can I help you? I'm waiting. Waiting? I see. Of course, sir, uh, you may not have noticed, but this is in fact a cafe. It's not a waiting room. It's, it's, it's a place for eating. <laughs> or, or perhaps you're waiting till you're hungry. Have you seen our menu? Look, I don't wish to be rude, but what exactly are you waiting for? Put him. Hey, mate. Hey. Head beans and chips when you're ready, please, Roy. Yeah, same for me, please, Roy. Yeah, and two teas. Mm. What's this? Open it and see. That's another dress. Do you like it? Well, you, yeah, but... <laughs> you better check the size. <laughs> that is right, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. It, it, it's, it's beautiful. I knew you'd like it. As soon as I saw it in the shop, I thought, my girl will look drop-dead gorgeous in that. Beautiful, I love it. You can change it if you like. I asked the girl in the shop the receipts in the back. This has to be Vanessa. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Violet, look. I was wrong. He does have taste. She said I don't have taste. I tried to tell her, mate. So, does this make up for before then? You bet it does. Oh, I was enjoying that. Yeah, it's my favourite track, that. I think it's called Plague and Pestilence. Fantastic lyrics. Great tune and all. Yeah. I'm going to be singing that all day. <laughs> hey, we were just saying, Stench Your Death. Great album, very catchy. Yeah? Come on. Where are you off to now? The Abyss. You going where? It's the Abyss. The Abyss? Yes, yeah, a shop. Oh, it's not a, a bottomless pit of emptiness then. Sell clothes and stuff. Do you need bus fare? No, I got my Christmas money. Right, don't be late. And don't fall in. <laughs> She makes a lovely sarnie. I wonder where she buys a pickle from. It's very fruity. Hiya. 
We were just talking about you. No, we weren't. She was talking to herself. First sign of madness, that is. How are the sandwiches? Oh, lovely. She got them out of the bin. Oh, well. Anyway, what would you like tomorrow? Because uh, Mum's got some tuna or there's a lovely bit of ham in the fridge. Tracy, read my lips. I don't want any sarnies. All right. So you've not heard of the abyss? No. What is it? It's a big black hole in the ground. <laughs> it's a shopping town where all the really cool kids hang out. Ah, all right. Hey, have you heard the new Stench of Death album? You have. Oh, it really rocks. We love it, don't we, Angie? Yeah, if only we could get tickets to see him. Stench of Death? Should our kids be listening to that? <laughs> it's not as bleak as it sounds. In fact, Blood Dogs from Hell has got quite a positive message, especially if you play it backwards and listen to it underwater. <laughs> All way up. I think you ought to see this. <laughs> Looks like they're back from the abyss. Go on, put it on. Let's see the full effect. I can't. Why not? Look. What? It's too small. It's the wrong size. I changed it. You what? You said it was your size. Yeah, but I think you were right. I think that should be my size. And I could do with losing a few pounds, so with a new diet and a bit of exercise, I am going to be in that dress by Valentine's Day. <sighs> you don't have to do this, you know. I know. I want to. I'd hate to think you were doing this for me. I'm not. I'm doing it for me. Well, maybe I could go on a diet as well. Oh, no. You're perfect the way you are. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you lot, 2005 is going to be this family's best year ever. We're going places. Where? Blackpool again. No, I don't mean it like that. I mean, we're on the way up, right, Kev? I've got a great job. I've got a great, well-paid job. Your dad's got all the work he can handle at the garage. And for the first time in our lives, we're not worrying about money. Money? Who needs it? We do, the same as everybody else. And we can think about you following your sister to Oak Hill when the time comes. You what? Yeah, we can. Also, Rosie, your favourite no more? We don't have favourites. And we can think about moving to a house a lot better than this one. Hey, hang about. One thing at a time, eh? Don't worry. And when I said about us going places, and Sophie thought I meant on holiday, she's got a point. I think we all deserve a good holiday this summer. Maybe Spain or somewhere like that. We'll not be here in the summer. What do you mean? The world's gonna end March the 17th. Give over. Hmm. Time I was off. Right. Where's Warren? Still in his pit? Fair enough. He'll be cream cracker this morning. Oh, yeah. He must have been on the pitch all the ten seconds yesterday. Leave off, Jamie. I heard you tune him on like the rest of us. Don't you go knocking that boy, mate. It's a start. As a matter of fact, Warren was out his bed long before either of you two. He went out running. You having a son? Not a word of a lie. In fact, see for yourself. Well done, my son. Glad to see you taking your career seriously. Good lad. Career? On the subs bench? For a minor league team and no hopers? More than you got to brag about. Oi, make your own toast. It was me who made that toast and stopped putting Warren down all the time. Makes me laugh. He gets on the park right at the death. He don't touch the ball till the whistle's gone, then gets yellow carded for cheeking the ref. What is there to celebrate? Having a go. That's what there is to celebrate. Setting out to get somewhere and giving it your best shot. You know what, Jamie, my boy? You want to try taking the leaf out of his book sometimes? Well done, son. See you later. I'm off to the sweatshop. See you, Frank. Who's the lad? Baldwin's son. He's just here in Scotland. Good morning, Danny. This boy of mine said he wants to make himself useful. What, here in the works? That's what he's telling me. I'm not afraid to work, Danny. I want to learn how to run a business. Now, how many volunteers you get in this day and age, eh? So, uh, keep him busy. Let him see what the working world is like before he goes back to school. Me? I'm off to play golf with Maxie Driscoll. Hmm. Good. We'll see if you can get us an order off him, even if you have to lose, eh? I'll think about it. See ya. So long, mate. Right. What are we going to do with you, my son? Okay, maybe you should clean the place. No, I don't think so. Don't want to give him your job, do we, Jay? Come with me, son. Can you use a sewing machine? No. Right. Uh, nothing else for it, then. I'll have to make you an executive. Ooh. Another Baldwin in business. My more chiefs than Indians before we know it. Uh, but excuse me, Mr Baldwin, we do need a new machinist, you know, to replace Karen. Right, and I've got this mate, she's dead key. Not recruiting a day, thanks, Fuzz. Maybe next week. Right then, you can't sew, in which case I'll have to make your head a catering. 
well, somebody's got to go and get what we laughingly call our workers their break time cakes. Hey, girls. So, this is Adam. Put your orders in. Is this your first job, Adam? Yeah, it is. Hey, uh, hey, hey, excuse me. Excuse me. I put these newspapers out for the benefit of my customers. I am a customer. I mean, all my customers. Can't you show some consideration? You've ruined this newspaper for everyone. Oh, you page. Hello, Davenport Motors. Oh, hello, Mr. Bailey. Ian? Uh, no, I'm sorry, he's not in the office today. Uh, can I be of any help? I'm Sally, his PA. My pleasure. All right, thanks, Mr. Bailey. Bye. He's an absolute pain, that fella. He could spend half an hour moaning about how I gave some bloke at his golf club a better deal on a motor than he got. I know, he told me. And I said he must be mistaken, he was your favourite customer. <laughs> you're doing a terrific job, Sally. It's just what I hoped you'd do around this place. I don't know how I managed without you. Oh, thanks, Ian. I love the job. I'm just glad I'm giving satisfaction. Hi. Why, well, Justine? How are you, Sally? I hope my beast of a husband isn't working you too hard. I'm surviving okay. Well, don't let him take liberties. He's a slave driver when he wants to be. Okay, Justine, now you've finished running me down to what do we owe the pleasure? Give me some money, Ian. I've come out without my cards and I'm having lunch with Millie and Sue and after that I'm at the hairdressers. Okay, okay, so... okay, I'll get the picture. Will that be enough? Just about. Sally, are we taking you and Kevin out sometime soon? I know it's our turn. Oh, yeah, that'd be really nice. You know what? I'll call you with some dates. Okay. See you later. Uses this place like it were a bank, and I will achieve cashier. She's a very lucky woman. Oh, hey, Dad. You're home early, aren't you? Yeah, well, want to have a bath, spruce myself up. Taking your mum out tonight. Um, the bathroom's double, but just at the present. What do you mean? What the hell do you think you're playing at, Rosie? Well, goths, this is how it's supposed to look. Is this your idea, Craig? I've not talked to her, if that's what you mean. This is how I want to look, and I can make my own decisions. Not in this house, you can't. Get upstairs and wash that dye out, right now. Uh, it won't wash out now. Not for ages, anyway. We haven't got ages left. We're all going to die in March. Stop whittling on about that. You're in trouble. And I bet you are as well, Craig, when your dad sees you. You look a right mess. The pair of you. If you think they look a mess, Dad, you want to see our bathroom? Oh, thanks, Betty. I've been ravished all morning. Now, get that down, you love. Oh, hey, Shelley, you've had no dinner, have you? Do you want me to go and make your hot pot? Betty, don't tempt me, you know I'm on a diet. Have you heard anything so daft as that? You don't need to lose any weight, love. Yes, I do. And I know Charlie will be really pleased. Well, you're not going to go hungry just to please a fella, right? Get some hot pot. Betty, no, and stop tempting me. You can get off now, Jimmy. Uh, if you lock up that end, I'll look after the back door myself. All right. Good night. Another day gone in a flash. I feel my whole life racing past me at high speed. Oh, I know what you mean. There just seems to be less and less time to do the things you want to do. <laughs> Tell me about it. Now, is there any unfinished business that can't wait till tomorrow? Well, you did say you wanted to do um, a mail shot to all the customers you haven't seen for over a year. No, no, I need to think about that a bit more. Well, you know me. I always reward myself with a drink when we get to this time. Join me? Well, I... Oh, go on. There you are, pal. What is this supposed to be? One page of a newspaper, so we're square. But well, this isn't the page you tore out. It's not even the same paper. It's, it's not even today's. You don't want a page you want to be Right, uh, give us a bacon bomb. <laughs> We're out of bread. Leanne's gone to get some more. <sighs> All right, uh, give us one of them signies. One pound ten pence, please. Right, <clears throat> you require three pounds ninety change. One, two, three, and fifty makes three fifty, and two twenties makes three pounds ninety. Thank you. A packet of them crisps. Forty pence, please. You require forty p. That's twenty and ten. It makes thirty and five makes thirty-five. And one, two, three, four, five p's makes forty. 
Thank you very much. Have a nice day. <laughs> Do you think they'll let you in school looking like that? I don't care if they do or they don't. It won't matter after March 17th because... I don't want to wait any more of that rubbish. That going upstairs, tackle the bathroom. And when your mum comes home, she'll tackle you. I'm telling you, Rosa, she's going to blow a top. See, one of the things I appreciate about you, Sally, is you make the customers feel good. See, but when they come in here, they've already made up their minds to part with a big slice of money. They want a classy car, they know they're going to have to pay for it. But at the same time, they resent it, so they feel touchy, ready to take offence. Yeah, I've noticed that. But when you give them the big hello and the nice warm smile and ask them how you can help them and pointed them at the right salesman to give them just what they want, I can see them start to feel pleased with themselves. And why shouldn't they? They've got the money to buy the good things in life. A class car and a pretty woman's attention. I don't know anything special. I just try and be nice to them. But you don't have to try something. With you, it comes natural. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. Do you know, I love this job. I can't tell you the difference it's made to my life. Maybe not, but... Uh, I can tell you the difference you've made to mine. I have to tell you this. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't. But I'm going to. Sally, you are the most attractive woman I've met in all my life. I'm falling in love with you. Well, now you know. I'm in love with you. I thought you said you could hold your drink. Come on, palm time, you're playing all swivel eyed. Don't go. Please. It's not the booze talking, I'm deadly serious. Where's this come from? It's always been there. You must have noticed. No, I haven't. I know you don't think I'm repulsive. Oh, come on, we're both married. Most people are. That doesn't matter. Well, it matters to me and Kevin. It matters to Justine. Oh, come on, you've got kids. You know what it's like. What? What's like? Being married. Justine and I are together because of convenience. It's an alliance. It'll hold until Gemma leaves home and the whole thing will fall apart. Look, there's no life. There's no passion. Joint interests, that's all. Could you be more romantic? Oh, I'm romantic, all right. Just not at home. You don't love Justine. It's dead in the water. It's not enough for me. I want life. I want you. That's home. That's Kevin. Don't answer it. Well, he's my husband. I always talk to my husband. Can I have a bit of privacy, please? Kevin? Oh, Sophie, what do you want? I love you. I do. Oh, come on, Violet. Let's shack up together. Maybe. Really? <laughs> I'll think about it. What did you say to him? It was Sophie. Say anything to her? If it had been him, I would have told him everything, and he'd be racing round here to bounce you off the walls. Sure you would. You're pretty confident, aren't you? I told you how I feel. I just hoped you'd feel the same way. Everything was going so well. For you, not for me. Look, I'm not telling you this just to make you feel bad. It's torturing me. I've no choice. I've fallen in love with you. Well, I haven't fallen in love with you. You really think there's nothing between us? Nothing? Well, I have noticed you're attractive, but there's no special connection. I I haven't encouraged you. I want you. Well, you can't have me because neither of us is free. Well, we're going to have to do something. I can't go on like this. Well, look, I've got a solution. Why, why don't we just forget we ever had this conversation? We'll just never talk about it again. Because we're colleagues, aren't we? We're, we're friends, that's all. Sorry. I can't do that. You haven't tried. You're such a soppy sod. Tell her what's happening. Don't ask her. What, pack your bags, you're moving in? No, you've got to be subtle. Back her into a corner. All right. Is that the only language you understand then, eh? Don't be cheeky. I think we need something more macho, Roy. Have we got any raw mints for these alpha males? All the products has to be thoroughly cooked. I've made that very clear. An order for later. We're working this evening. 
I'll send one of the lads over around closing time and pick it up with that, all right? Uh, uh, which, uh, what, one of the lads? Well, it depends who's with. <laughs> what did he change on that? Yeah, must have kicked him harder, eh? So you promise me you won't be getting down on one knee tonight? With my knees? Thought never two flights. <laughs> well, good, because I just want a quiet one. Then you've come to the right place. Sit this hell down. Thank you. Although I do have one proposal to make. Oh, Fred. I propose an unusually ample gin and tonic. Oh, <laughs> oh well, that proposal is cordially accepted. I further propose that you compose yourself for one of the finest turned-out meals of your life. Oh! Another accepted proposal, Fred. You're cooking tonight, mm. aren't you? In more ways than one. <laughs> I could go on about angels camping on your tongue and other such hyperbole, but there's only one word to express what you are about to receive, and that is... Steak. Finest fillet steak. How near to completion are you? Mm, pretty near. Not too for ages yet. What's the hurry? Oh, no hurry. Merely asking. I, I don't want any mistakes with this order. Roy, the sandwiches. How many mistakes can you have? Well, you wouldn't say that if you were a public health inspector. Yeah, but I'm not, am I? I'm kitchen skivvy going as fast as you can. When will they be ready? There. There you go. Done. Satisfied? Plenty of time for them to curl up just the way you like them. Roy, you'll be all right without me, won't you? I expect I will, yes. I'm Roy. No more signs, eh? Uh, the signs are for a very good reason. Have we got a surprise for you? Hey, troublemaker. Oh, I'm not in the mood for surprises. Hi, Mum. What have you done? Done my hair. I can see that. And oh, what's that stuff on your face? You know what it is? You look ridiculous. Thanks, Mum. Getting that off for starters. Mum, what are you doing? You, you know you can me. do what you want, don't you? So... You can't! <laughs> Sal, Sal, get off her! Get off her! What do you think you're playing at? I work so hard for this family. Everything I do is for you. Everything! And this is how you repay me, you ungrateful slapper! Hello, fellow up there. Yeah, you can see it along the top of you. I'm looking, Sal. And I got the right one here, yeah? Yeah. She's up! Ah. Oh, thanks, Roy. Yeah. We didn't have to bring these over. Vince was going to pick them up. Oh. Can we bring it if I left it? Oh. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. What's right. it? Half cup. Sorry. Right, shall we uh, check out then, eh? Yes. Oh, here we are. Are you changed? No, I'll give it a bit. Whoops. Now, was that your fault or mine? <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. Must have been yours then. There appears to be a pound missing. Oh, well, no worries. I'll pick you up next time I'm in. Oh, thank you. <sighs> Listen to that. What? Exactly. Nothing. Oh, well, it's very quiet tonight. No traffic passing through. Sounds like a cobbled M6 on a bad day out there. As long as there's no building work, Fred, I am happy. That next door started playing his so-called music loudly, too. Throbs through yon wall like a pneumatic drill. Oh, dear, that's terrible. It's all part of adolescence, I suppose. Day one, get spots. Day two, turn the stereo up. How about strong words? It'll not happen again. Well, I should hope not. Mind. Kids these days have it hard. Do you reckon? Part your head on to the side. In our day, you were a dangerous rebel. <laughs> Look at what they have to do now. Take bits of metal in their faces. Hair all over shot. Blue scribble on the skin. Cheap rebellion everywhere you look. Blue scribble? Tattoos. Oh. <laughs> Used to be just for sailors. England's captain has a drawing on the back of his neck. Looks a right fright. I say a right fright. Do you know what we sound like? Two old pals chewing the fat. Two old people chewing the fat. Do we?
I thought you'd come to cheer me up. Right, where I am, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Leanne. No, it's all right, I'll get it. Thank you. Bye. 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 Uh, I'm uh, afraid we're closed. Thought you were bringing me that pound. There was no hurry. Sorry. Oh, right, what's going on? I'm fine, I can manage, thank you. The last thing I said to you before I left was no more signs. There, 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 there we are. Scott. What's the matter? Nothing, nothing, I'm sorry. Are you sure, right? Been a bit, been a long day, that's so. all. Nice to be in, isn't it? Yeah. Laying on the shampoo for us. Yeah, I think he was buttering us up for something if he didn't know him better. You'll have to drink most of it, though. Why? Well, I can only have so much Ponzi wine. I'm going back to the beer. Did they sell it in here? Listen, if the customer demands it, they'll provide. It's no joke getting old. Oh, come on, you're barely past retirement age. It's not young, though, is it? Well, no, it's not. I mean, there's not many laughs in the ageing process, no, but when you think of the alternative... I remember, I, I used to imagine when I were a lad, age I'd be in year 2000 seemed impossibly ancient. I never thought I'd make it. Well, you have. We both have. Yeah, but when you look back, I mean... Where's the time all gone to? Well, they all think that, Fred. I mean, you've still got a lot of life in you, you. Oh, come on, don't get on maudlin. I'm not being maudlin. I'm, I'm being realistic. I'm on the bus pass. Uh, you've done very well for yourself, Fred Elliot. In some ways. Mm. One thing I never imagined, growing old on my own. And this isn't leading to a proposal, by the way. <laughs> I always thought I'd... I'd have a partner by my side, sharing a day-to-day -day strain with me. Yeah, well, we all think that. I was there for Sybil. You were there for Alf. Who's going to be there for us? Oh, come on, Fred, now stop. Don't do this to yourself, love. Perhaps I should stop over. In Ashley's room? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'd like that. It's a bright of my day to see you at breakfast. And mine to see you. Kevin, there's something I have to tell you. What? I really do love you, you know. And I love you too. I love you and I love our life. Morning. Morning. Enjoy your meal? Yeah, we both did, thanks. Look, um, about yesterday. No, well, you... can I say something first? I really like working here, and I really like working for you and all. You're a great boss. Which is why I don't want to spoil things by... No, no, you're absolutely right. That's exactly what I was going to say. I shouldn't have said what I said, Sally, and I'm sorry. And I think the best thing we can do is just pretend it never happened, eh? Hey? Good. Great. Really? Yes. If I had a pound for every time that man proposed, I'd have been retired in a nice little bungalow in Morecambe. <laughs> what? Nothing. So, what did you do this time? Did you go down on a bended knee with a bunch of roses, or did you casually mention it over a cup of tea? Oh, very witty. If you're referring to Audrey coming round to mine, I would like it to be known that the only thing on the menu were fillet steak, no else. Then how come we saw her sneaking out of your house this morning? She were not sneaking. 
If you stopped over because you were late in Claire and Ashley's room, if you must know. Ah, oh, saving yourselves for marriage. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's a rum do when you find that your only purpose in life is to be a source of gossip for others. Sorry, Fred. So you should be. I said, so you should be. She must have said no. Mm. Sorry, we need some more pies. Uh, right, right. What are you doing? I'm just uh, sorting out these serviettes. Why? They're only going to get messed up again. Nevertheless, sir. Uh, well, are you going to go and get some pies? What? Uh, yeah, in a minute. Oh, do it yourself, Leah. Right, I'll go and get some coat hangers or something. Sorry, you don't have to reply. Condiments? Uh, salt and pepper, such like. Oh, flipping heck, Roy. First the toilets, then the papers, now this. We'll be putting the serviettes in the lock and key next. Good point. <clears throat> you know, they say your school days are the happiest days of your life, but university? That's the icing on the cake. I can remember. Um, I haven't had a chance to use that yet. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> I think that's sufficient, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, where was I? Oh, no, it's mad, isn't it? They'll be calling the place Roy's Rules next. <laughs> Roy, this is absolutely ridiculous. Well, people were being profligate. We can afford to let them be. It's only a bit of salt. And pepper and ketchup. Whatever. Well, sure. It doesn't cost a fortune. Look, it's not the cost. It's the principle. Don't be silly. Put them back. No. Right, then I will. You're going to lose all your customers at this rate. Sorry. Roy! If I want to keep the condiments, I will. This is my cafe, and furthermore, I will not be bullied by my own wife. Rosie reckons that your Gemma's gone got to. Oh, with a vengeance. I don't mind the makeup so much as the music. So depressing, isn't it? Oh, well, we've been informed the will's going to end St. Patrick's Day. March the 17th. Well, that's good, because that's the day before our credit card bill arrives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell you what, look. I reckon you should go goth and all. Me? Mm. So like BBC and fishnet, I fancy. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, sorry about earlier. I've been called some things in my time, but I have never been called a bully. I, I know, it was unforgivable, but I didn't mean it. Then why did you say it? I was, I was feeling a little tense, that's all, but I, but I shouldn't have taken it out on you. What are you tense about? Well, certain people taking advantage. Of the salt? Amongst other things. Roy, are we talking about this builder again? You are blowing this out of all proportion! Right, you accuse me of being a bully, but you're turning into flipping Hitler. Look, rules are there to be adhered to. They form the very foundation of a civilised society. Once people start flouting them, chaos ensues. Lord of the Flies. Lord of the Flies? We're not talking about a desert island and a lot of little savages. We're talking about Roy's rules and your customers, all of whom are ordinary, decent people. The savage lurks within us all, Hale. It's just with some, it's nearer to the surface, that's all. I'm going to bed. I mean, everything's fine until you're 30. And then it's like someone suddenly pressed the fast-forward button. All the wrinkles start appearing, everything starts dropping. <laughs> I know what you mean. Get <laughs> off. You don't have to worry about anything like that, yeah? Neither of you do. Oh, he's such a flatterer, isn't he? Here you go. Cheers. I still say it with my round. Oh, I'll give over the least I could do after you paid for that meal. Well, your wife deserved that. And so did you, all the work you're doing for me. We appreciate it. Do it so. Yeah. This is real treasure, your wife. I hope you know that. I do. I think we should get going, Kevin, because we don't want to keep Nita too long, do we? Well, she'll be all right for a bit, yeah. And I'll be honest with you, I wasn't sure at first about this job. I'm glad she took it now. So am I. She's turned that office round. 
you talking about me. Oh, come on. You're too modest. Yeah, she is. I tell you what, he's been a lot happier since you came. And I don't have to listen to him moan about his workload anymore. So thank you, Sally. You look like some of the bin men left behind. We watching the match tonight or what? If you like. The flaming hell's that you got on your hand? Nothing. Nothing? He's got nail varnish on. Oh, when did you do that? Does it matter? Yes, it does. First you're dyeing your hair, now you're painting your nails. All right, Tommy. Why don't you just climb into one of your mum's frocks and I've done with it? It's all in my body, it's just a shell. It's my soul that matters. Yeah, well, if you want to keep the two together, you'd better get up them stairs and scrub that off. Right, that is enough. You're not kidding. This stops right now. I'm not sitting around here watching me son become pansified. Tommy, they only do it to make lasses take more notice of them. What? By turning into one? What about Mark Boland, eh? So you got to do it all? Well, he was never without his makeup bag. And do you know, Craig, he had more girlfriends than your dad's had meat pies. I bet it's that Rosie that's put you up to this. I'm out of here. Hey! You want to clean that off before you leave this house? Do you hear me? Craig! Tom, it's a bit of nail varnish, for heaven's sake. Yeah, I bet that's what Ailey Cropper's mother said and all. Um, I take it you've had some discussion with Adam about his plans after leaving school? Uh, yeah, but you'll have to be quick. I just want to make sure we're presenting a united front. He doesn't seem to see the benefits of higher education. With you as a shining example, I'd have a word, OK? All right, what are you up to? Warren's got training. Set a go along. Oh, well, I was hoping to have another chat with you about your options. Here, watch you, mate. Listen, I'm going to talk to Candy. How do you fancy a night out with Weatherfield's finest? Yeah. Why not? Nice one. Listen, I'll go and see if she wants to come as well, and then I'll see you in five. All right, mate. All yours, Mr. Day. Well, I suppose it'll keep. See you later. Yeah, bye. We were all young ones, Ken. Even you. So, career comes before kids these days, eh, son? Sorry, Tommy. Well, all this gothic business. Looks like you took your eye off the ball there. Meaning what? Well, you shell out for a posh school and look what you let her go and do to herself. Hardly the straw butter image, is it? Oak Hill Foster's individuality, Tommy. They don't bang them out like a string of sausages. Yeah, well, let's hope they take the same view down at Weatherfield Eye, seeing as it's your Rosie that's kicked off all this gender-bending we are, Craig. Rosie isn't responsible for the dress code at the local comprehensive. Let's hope it goes no further than air day, eh? Kevin, yeah. she's a young woman. She's trying to look good for the lads. So, are we going to do it then? Of course we are. Are you sure it's what you want? Yeah, more than anything. If you're not sure, then I'll do it someone else. No, 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 I yeah. am. Rosie? Right, half past four, be there. And uh, Janice will have a custard slice. Well, this peaceful moment. Well, it, it would seem so. Hayley, I have had a chance to think about the sentiments that you expressed. And uh, while I would still maintain that my universe is essentially bordered by these four walls. No, no, Roy, there you go again, these big words. They're a smoke screen that you use to hide behind so you don't have to deal with the real issue. Well, if, if I might continue in my own way, my kingdom is, is one that I very much want to share with you, my queen. Without you, it would be devoid of me. I want to share it with you, but that also means sharing the burden, which I can't do unless you open up and tell me what's wrong. Very, very well. See, what... Besides you! What? These premises are clearly marked no smoke light. You've got to put him straight, but you've got to be calm and assertive. Excuse me, but the, the smoking is not permitted. I must ask you to extinguish your smoking materials, please. please. No need. I'm finished here anyway. Straightforward and firm, and I respect you for that. Oh, well, I would hope so. Not before time. Oh, well, I know it can't have been easy for you. I'm proud of you. <laughs> oh, you'll have to go after him. You're not scared, are you, Craig? Aren't you? Not really. At least everyone's going to know we're for real. What if it goes wrong? Safe. It's all like getting your ears done. Yeah, but it's not my ears, is it? It's my tongue. We're gonna look so wicked when it's done. You could have a barbell with a dice on it, or how about a death's head? Still gonna hurt. So? I feel sick. Are you not bothered? 
Not really. It's only a few seconds of pain and then I've got it forever. Right. What is this still doing here? Oh, I haven't had time to return that. I've been far too busy. How long would it have taken? You've had Frankie and Vera here all day. Uh, Hayley, I run a cafe, not a lost property bureau. It, it, it is hardly my top priority to be returning customers' mislaid items. Well, it would have been had it not been this customer. Hayley. It's been hours. Well, exactly. Which leads me to suspect <laughs> its owner's motives. If it got his phone right, that's all there is to it. Oh, yes. I, I, I expect the citizens of Troy felt much the same way when they saw a, a large wooden horse parked outside their gates. And this is a giant wooden horse. Well, yeah, I'll admit the analogy isn't entirely watertight. Roy, think about what you're saying. You're getting yourself all nutted up and you're playing mind games with this man. And you promised you wouldn't do that. Look, you found somebody's phone and now you have to do the decent thing, the normal thing. Isn't that what you want, for everything to be normal? Very, very much so. <sighs> then prove it to me, please. I'll hold the fort. Hiya, let's have a look. It uh, really uh, uh, can't stand what you're saying. Uh, hell. That's all. I started feeling really weird. You what? I nearly fainted. You hicking out? No, I'm gutted because I really wanted to. Open up then. Oh, you so lucky, it looks well good. Uh, 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 it's blowing up. It's filling me now. It's it. I don't know, you can have my eyes. Uh, uh. Oh, excuse me, uh, Charlie. You're all right, Roy? Yes, your work colleague left this in the cafe. Would you be kind enough to return it to him, please? You can do it yourself if you want. No, no there's really hey, no need. Hey, visitor for you. Hey, Roy, how are you? I've not seen you for, what, four hours? You, you've left this behind. Flaming out, so did. Couldn't keep hold of it every day, Kitty Roy. Might get a bit more work out of it. I'm afraid that would be beyond my remit. Hey, cheers for this, Roy. You're a gem. Oh, not at all. It's a uh, normal, a common courtesy. No, 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 no. Much appreciated. Hey, if you're in the uh, Rovers tonight, I'm in the chair. Well, that, that won't be necessary, but, well, thank you all the same. See you then. Yeah. Pickle? What's up? Scared you'll chip your nails on the lid, you big Mary Ellen. This is getting so old now. What's up with your fish? Uh, nothing. You've not even touched it. Oh, don't tell me you're turning veggie on me. That's all I need. My son, the anemic crossdresser. <laughs> Tommy, stop showing your age, for heaven's sake. Eat it, he'll put hairs on your chest. Oh, but I suppose you shave them off these days, don't you? Right, but you need <laughs> it now, eh? That's not to what I'd be getting in the playground. Is that right? Lad's been having a pop at you. No, no. What's well, someone's upset you, love? Don't take a genius. Like you've enlightened father here. <laughs> so why are we getting the silent treatment then? There's no need to behave like a corpse as well as look like one. I tell you what, that Rosie Webster's led you right the garden path. It's time you got back to the real world, start behaving like a real man. What's up? Cat got your tongue. <laughs> Stop blaming her! Oh my God, Tommy's mouth. What? Open it. Craig, open your mouth. Oh, is it? Oh, it's gone right through his tongue. Oh, that's very big. That's dead clever. Dead cool, you plank. What have you gone and done? You've mutilated yourself. No, no, no. They're all here. You're all pathetic. I should have brought it back last week. Um, <laughs> just to show you something. Hey, did you do this? Oh, it's that Rosie and that Sophie. Yeah, that's you and that's Kelly. Oh. He's got a spanner in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Lots yeah. of nice hair. Mm -hmm. well, you're a very observant girl, you are. So, um, how's everything? Fine. A man's told me that he loves me. What man? No one round here. But I told him there's no way anything's going to happen. And are you regretting it? No, absolutely not. Why do you say that? Because the last time you were talking like this, you were wondering whether to remarry Kevin or not. Yeah, well, I've got no regrets there. 
So why are you telling me about a man you've already said no to? Just came out the blue. You think no one's ever going to feel like that about you again? And then I'm faced with this man making it very clear that he wants me. And how does that make you feel? Flattered? Yeah. But that's all. I love Kevin. I, I've never pretended to be head over heels, but I'm happier now than I've ever been. And you're sure this man's got the message? I made sure. Kevin's a good man. I'd never risk that for anything. It's not me you have to convince. Something more modern on, please. I'll never fear. I have Lena Martel waiting in the room. Who needs jail law when you've got Lena Martel? Mm -hmm. See you later. Alligator. <laughs> Hi, Hayley. Come in. Hiya. Hi, uh, my eardrums. Uh, do you not know our craze gone gothic? Oh, uh, as he's taken to drinking uh, blood out of the skull. <laughs> <laughs> is that the material? Oh, yeah, it's nice, oh, isn't it? That's gorgeous. And that's for Craig's bedroom? Yeah. Oh, well. Did he do that, did you? Take a wild guess. What did he say? He told me to take a chill pill. He's only gonna let his tongue pierced, hasn't he? Mm. I'll take it, you're not over the moon. I'm gonna find out when he's got it done, I'm gonna go round here and I'm absolutely... Gonna have a very civil conversation, thank you very much. Nap, Tommy, if you don't mind, Ailey's given up a Sunday to come round here and help me make curtains, so... Can we at least try and be nice? Mm? It's all yours. Thank you. All right. Ah, good morning. <laughs> You had my phone. I, 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 I pound your phone. And someone's used some credit on it. Weren't me. Well, well, it certainly wasn't me. Well, who was it then? Mobile phone, Freddy. I, I've really no idea. I know it was you, so there's no point in lying to me. Um, how much credit are we talking? I weren't talking on my phone. You were. 47p, what are you going to do about it? Oi! Slacker! You gonna get back to work, or what? Hey, 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 it's my mate Roy here! Always keeps me gabbing this one, eh? Gabby Roy, you call him! <laughs> <laughs> Thought you got one over on me, didn't you? Big mistake. Come on, the van's gonna be going in a mo. Right, let's get the bill then. I really think we are, huh? Oh, what am I like? I've got so many posh lunches, it's a force of habit. Come on then, let's go. I went out with this girl once, right? Well, I sat next to her on the bus, but her mate, she had a belly button done, it went septic, went inside, came out the back and she died. Didn't someone famous have the tongue pierce, one of them horsey royals? We made our Rosie get rid of her belly button, Mum. Are you saying that I'm a bad father? No. I'm surprised I've never had anything pierced, cos my Uncle Eric, he had everything pierced, he even had one in his... Yes, you are. You're saying because you've got your Rosie to take hers out, you're better than me. Don't I? I'm sure, yeah. It was his island. Mm -hmm. Here, Roy, fancy a lip gloss of mine knocking about, have you? I Ruby don't... Fruit Sunday. Firstly, you're, you're not really allowed behind the counter. Roy, I'm star. Or you're going to do Lally in your old age. Yes, but you're not working today. It's very disconcerting. They're simple rules. Do you think Ailey might have used it? She's not really a lip gloss sort of person. Oh. Uh. Better left it in the ladies. All right, keep your knickers on, I'm coming! Forty-seven pence. <coughs> can I... can I get you anything? Tea. Three sugars. Result. I remember now. I went in there yesterday to use the mirror. It's my lucky lip gloss. Oi! Manners! If you want to eat your own sandwich, go and do it somewhere else. Either put it away or get out. What? You heard. It's only a sandwich. Yeah, if you want a sandwich, it'll make you one. All right, all right, all right, all right. I am going. I am very sorry. Can you believe that? Wish me luck. 
Can't you watch that in your own house? No, cos Martin's watching some motor racing rubbish. Hey, I've been looking all over for you. Where do you think you're going? Up to my room to slash my wrists. Craig, that's not even funny. She's laughing. Doesn't it look shocking? Where have you been? What, are you my keeper? No, I'm your father, not something you're trotting on the street, and I deserve a bit of respect. I knocked on for Rosie, but she were out. Satisfied? Hey, Craig, show sure Ellie your tongue. No, I'm a freak show. Look, can you all shut up? I'm trying to watch this. Did he do it? Oh, man, you're all so oppressive. What, 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 what does a, being a goth entail? Is he just wearing the black clothes and that? No, look, black nail varnish. It's not black, that's aubergine, and it's mine. I wondered what happened to that. Haley, being a goth, it's like... It's like dancing as the walls crumble around you. Right. It's seeing both beauty and destruction both at the same time. Oh, can't be doing with this. Oh, that's right. Bury your head in the sand, just like you did with her. Oh, yeah, here we go again. Right. I did not bury my head in the sand over our Katie. I tried to understand, compromise and accept. No. You let her do what she wanted, and she ran off with a bloke old enough to be a dad, made a right show of herself, of all of us. Well, maybe she were trying to recreate a father worth having, cos maybe a real dad want, want much cop in the first place. Craig, get in the car. Why? Just do it! Where are you taking him? We're going for a little drive. Mm, listen to you, Tony Soprano. And you are going to show me who's done that to you, and I'm going to have a little chat with him. Have you got that? Ow. Get in the car! It's hard being a goth, you know. I know. Everyone thinks you're a devil-worshipping freak. I know. Plus, I keep snagging my hair and things. Oh, dear son, I would, but it's against my gothic principles. I think I'm going off being a goth. Uh, uh, can you give that to me, please? Are you? Oh, yes, a chocolate bar that was not bought on the premises. And? Well, you can take this chocolate bar. I didn't nick it, if that's what you're thinking. She didn't. Uh, and your silly little sister here, but and you, you can make my silly. Point. Well, look at you. Oh, yeah, like I'm going to do that. Come on, move it. You're like picking on me because I'm a goth. I'm just standing up for what I believe in. <sighs> Sophie! Go on, get out. Wait till my mummy is about this. I said get out. Drink. Yeah, I'm all from all that screaming. Come on, mate. Well, how'd you get on? How do we get on? He's only ended up with man of the match, isn't he? He's got a goal! <laughs> this old Rudy gets his family back, you know what? Yeah, it's all right, do you know? Fine with that. Well, come on. It's Weatherfield County Colours. Oh. Ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> shame you can't sit down in it. Oh, yes, you're gorgeous. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> He's called Mr Chips, isn't that a lovely name? Oh, Roy, I, I told her she could bring him in. She didn't want to leave him outside because he's so little. What, what if environmental health were to pay us a visit? He'll be here for five minutes, no longer. If this were France, it wouldn't be a problem. But, but, but this is not France, Hayley. This is not France by any stretch of the imagination. Where's the berries, the stripy tops, the string of onions? It's not like you to use cliché, Rob. Right? Well, perhaps sometimes I enjoy clichés. Perhaps sometimes cliché is the best form of defence. Right, have I done something? Oh, has she done something, she says. Well, have I? Well, you've allowed a dog onto the premises. We could lose our livelihood. Oh. Right. I've just had Sophie come home in tears. Oh, dear. With some stupid story, something about a chocolate bar. Oh, something about a chocolate bar, she says. I'm completely befuddled. They were eating a chocolate bar which was not bought on these premises. Oh, well, lock them up and throw away the key. Well, that is one solution. What? I think you heard. Roy! Hey, all over this city, people are taking drugs and getting drunk. They're beating each other up, they're having affairs, and you put the fear of God into my kids over a little bar of chocolate. Are they that much of a threat to you? If they wish to dine on these... You're nothing more than a bully, Roy Cropper. I mean, you might get your kicks out of frightening little girls. How can I be a bully? Any more There's of this? nobody weaker than me. And I'll have you closed down. Hey, I wouldn't eat here if I were you. You may as well break bread with the child catcher. I am not a bully. Roy, calm down. Oh, yes, shut up, Roy. Be calm, Roy. Do this, Roy. Do that, Roy. I'm sick of it. <laughs> Dad. What? Don't do anything stupid. <laughs> so says the lad with vegetable down his hair, makeup on and a staple through his tongue. Don't show me up. You show me up? Why should I worry about you? I'll change. I'll stop being a goth. I'll change the way I look and take the piercing out. 
if you don't go hitting anyone. Craig, I am not a violent person. I'll do whatever you want, Dad. If you just... Please. Prove it. Take the piercing out now. There's no need. I've not had it in all day. It were killing me. Not like you've noticed. I've noticed your nails. And it's that rare that you open your mouth, you're such a moody get. I'm a goth. Oh, yeah, you're madder. There's no need to dress it up with a poncy name. You're so gothist. Stick your tongue out. So if I don't go in there, you'll forget about the stud in your gob and the nails and all that? When I'm at home, yeah. If that's what you want. Just to stop me from going in there and... Does it mean that much to you? Am I an embarrassment to you? Well, be honest. No, no. If I were to go in there shouting the odds, I'd have every right. Give us a kiss, then. Oh, I'd love to, Warren, I really would, but... Well, I've had this special mask put on my face. Yeah, it's a really lifelike. <laughs> no, it's, it's like a spray. It sets your makeup to last all day, only you can't touch it or exercise aggressively. No, 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 it's, it's quite all right. No, it, it wasn't. No, right. no, if you don't want to eat it, then why should you? Go into bed. Don't leave me. Right. What is this? How can I help you if you won't talk to me? You're obsessive and picking fights with me over the pettiest things. I don't know whether I'm coming or going. Look, you, you know that I'm useless at conversations. Facts and figures, that's what I'm good at. Black and white. I don't have the same vocabulary for feelings. There's nothing you can set in stone in quite the same way. Right. right. Just take a deep breath and spit it out. Yeah, yes. <coughs> spit it out. Yes, that, that's what I wanted to do with him, spit him out. I didn't. Howie Martin, who was a vicar's son. Who? He made me eat things. Mud, mostly. He used to make these wrist holes out of grass and whatever else he could lay his hands on. Who did? And then he'd put it on the end of a stick and he'd hold it out and he'd make me eat it. Right. And every day, he's there. Every day, I see him. Right, I Look, don't you, really... you want me to talk? I'm talking. He, he was in the year above. He used to call me Ray Crapper. Yes, yes, well, seems innocent enough now, but... I remember one time when he, he was stood guard outside the male toilets. I was desperate, I couldn't get past him. Then the bell went for the end of break and everybody froze and, and I wet myself. <laughs> everybody laughed. Yeah, do you know... It didn't rain for days after that, but that puddle remained there. So did the laughter. He stabbed me in the leg with a protractor. <laughs> Things he made me do. Why what? Why? What did he make you do? I, I can't tell you. You're my wife. Well, exactly. You can tell me anything and I'll understand. I won't think any less of you, no matter how bad it is. No, I, I, I've said too much already. Did you tell anyone? I could have. He was the vicar's blue-eyed son. Now maybe you'll appreciate why I'm an agnostic. Because when my father leaves home, which makes me more of a target, broken home, when I found out that he'd gone to New Zealand, I ran away myself. I left a note for my mother. Went to Manchester Airport. The idea was to stow away. Of course, they, they don't do flights to New Zealand, so I hung around for a couple of hours and went home. I thought I'd be in trouble. But no, there, there was the note wedged in the cruet. She hadn't even realised I'd gone. Right, right, please leave that. I kept a map of New Zealand on my wall. Knew it, knew it by heart. There was Christchurch and Dunedin, and New Plymouth. I thought, if I could just get there, and no harm can come to me. Oh, Roy. Now he's back. Your dad? No! Sorry. No, 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 I'm sorry. No. Howie, Howie Martin, the vicar's son. Have you seen him? Hayley! It's Vince, the man who comes in the cafe. 
Don't laugh at me. I wouldn't. Vince. Sorry. The way he looked at me. I, I, and I know I'm not imagining it. And I know you can't have somebody arrested for giving you a funny look. But he makes me feel so stupid. And he enjoys it. And he knows he's always going to win with me. Because they do, don't they? And the things he said to me. Threatening. So it's like a thing that a child was saying in a playground and, and, and suddenly I'm back there again, the bumbling idiot, and I, and I get everything I deserve. No, no, you don't. You are a wonderful human being. You're kind and you're caring and you know right from wrong and you feel. And some people think that's a bad thing, but I think it's brave and it's brilliant and you do those things too. And if this low-life twit needs putting in line, then that's what we're going to have to do. Do you think so? I do. Never been as serious about anything. Did I ever tell you what? You're a very remarkable human being. Well, it must be like looking in a mirror. Sometimes violence is not the answer, Angie. What about Danny Gosling, the fish and chip shop, our first date? He shouldn't have nicked your fish cake. You broke his arm. So he said. I never saw him in plaster, did you? Anyway, I was just a kid then. Them curtains look great. Might see what Ailey can do in here. Not that he'll appreciate it. We'll have to get him some skull and crossbones wallpaper just to make up for here. <laughs> Mum, can I borrow your nail varnish remover? Yeah, it's on the shelf behind you. Do you like the curtains, love? Yeah, they're great, thanks. Uh, you're not seeing your girlfriend tonight, then? She's not my girlfriend. She's my companion in darkness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going upstairs to listen to Cradle of Filth. Right, well, keep the noise down, love. That thing with Wendy Craig's on in a minute. <laughs> Roy. I'm trying to... See, I, I thought it was a chip at first. It looks clean from here. But it's not. The glass has some... some local discoloration. I think it's a permanent stain. What would cause such a thing? It's fine. The whole place is spotless. No one could find fault here but you. Why I'm worried about you. you know, I, I, I've, I've allowed things to become out of proportion, that's all. Which is why you have to stand up to this bloke. Prove to yourself that you're not that little boy you once were. And that he's not the big man he thinks he is. Yes. Are you worried he'll get violent? Because I can always get Mr Baldwin and Jamie to come over. It would be a relief if he did get violent. People don't laugh at a man being hit, even a man such as myself. Tom, give Craig a shout. Craig! Oh, I could have done that. In death is beauty. From beauty seeps music. That music is stench. Oh, Tom, you can't do that. It's Craig's. Don't you want to know what he's into? Mm, there's tickets for summer. Stench of death, almost live at Manchester Apollo. Exercise your demons, no flash photography. Lord, wouldn't like to be ice cream lady on that. <laughs> hey, get off, I've been waiting for them. Do you think I'm having you wandering around city centre late at night? They're mine. You're not robbing them, Dad, cos one of them's roses. Do you want to argue about it? Cos I can tell you now, it'll win. Your dad's just worried about you, that's all. I've done everything he said. I've taken out the piercing, no nail varnish, and now it's good enough for him. What about your breakfast, Craig? Flaming tart, this. Kettle. Pot. You calling me a tart? Ah, no, you're too beautiful. I'm getting more beautiful. Not fast enough. I've well, only been dancing a week. Oh, I wish I had two bodies. One I could sit indoors in and stuff my face in. A skinny one in the cupboard I could wear to go out. <laughs> Can you eat the skin on these things? I say we've run out of tomato sauce. I thought that vat of it could be handed down through the generations. Oh, smell that bacon. <laughs> Betty, you know she's on a diet. A bit of bacon's not gonna kill her. I'll have yours. Gee, thanks. See you later. It's for me own good. Mm. I never anticipated running any kind of public service, you know. As a child, it, it was never in my imagination. My ambition was, was to be a librarian. Well, that's a public service. Oh, well, no, no not, not the person on the front desk offering advice. No, the, the man buried deep in the archive, classifying, ordering, coding. A, a job both art and science. The art of making transparent, accessible, that chaos of thoughts and ideas. 
how to classify, where to cross-reference, how to successfully guide that person from the street to the book which would address the question in their mind. Roy, you love the cafe. That's the thing. And it has been a joyous revelation to me that I can find the same fulfilment and pleasure from facilitating the ordinary, everyday interaction of people, eating my food, discussing their lives in, in all manner of combinations, uh, live cross-referencing, and me in invisible, peripheral, the oil that lubricates the machine. And then suddenly it's as if a, there's a light shining on me. Uh, and I am visible, laughable, ridiculous. Right, you've got to stop this. You're letting him win. A child puts dirty hands on the cabinet. Young boy, deliberately. And then he looks at me as if to say, come on then, what are you going to do about it? And I feel this irresistible urge to grab hold of him, shake him. Right. And why has this happened? One man breaks one rule. And suddenly the click of the door fills me with dread, not anticipation, and not dread that it might be Vince. Dread that it could be one of our neighbours come to laugh at me for my behaviour, or Sally Webster angry again, or someone else who brings out some shameful reaction in me. Roy, Sally could see that you weren't yourself. People around here, they respect you. Nobody would want to see you feeling like this. You've got to take control of the situation. You got it? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, thank you. You better not have dumped everything in the middle of the yard. Charlie will go spare. You're like an old mother, ain't you? <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. I think you know why I'm here. You're after an extension? Roy Croppy. He's after an extension? You should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, love. Don't you love me? I don't. Well, then I barely know you. Makes you feel better, does it? Undermining confidence that's taken years to build up. Well, he's a bigger man than you. Why? <laughs> and how would you know? He, he loves that cafe, and people love him being there. How nice. You're nothing but a twisted schoolyard bully, and if you think that I'm going to sit back and pretend it isn't happening, then you're very wrong. Nobody has my husband holed up in our flat wishing he was a librarian. Not you, not anybody. A librarian? You're bored. Do you hear me? You're bored. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the state of this, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm only saying all right. I'll sort it out later. Unless something more entertaining comes up. <laughs> Katie, how'd you get on with your exams? Oh, great. <laughs> Just make sure it's you, not me, that tells me Dad I failed. Seeing as though you made me tell him I passed it already. No, I never. I just said don't mention that you failed because we want a good time. And right. Come on. Okay. See ya. See ya. Uh, um, is is Kevin about? Kev. Ah, Kevin. Yes, good morning. Um, is Rosie with you at all? Only, only Vera said that she'd been into the cafe earlier. Rosie's not meant to come home at dinner. Oh, I, I hope I'm not getting her into trouble. <laughs> it's not her in trouble, mate. I don't appreciate my girls coming home in a state. So if you'd like to tell me exactly why you kicked off at them like that... Don't mind me. Yes, well, th th their infringement was minor. I, I overreacted. I've been feeling a little under the weather recently. I, I want to apologise to her and to you. Yes, I, I am sorry. I think you owe a bit more than a, a sorry. Well, indeed. Yeah, and I would urge you to encourage them to come to the cafe at their convenience, and, and I will attempt to recompense them in kind for their distress. Well, if they decide to go back in, if, you better make sure you're not under the weather, all right? Well, I, I've come to the conclusion that the, the weather will always be with us. It's just up to us not to allow ourselves to spend a disproportionate amount of time under it. Bit nervy, aren't you? No. Snap between meals, is it? I saved them for your dinner. I thought you and Jason might come in. Oh, yeah. It's true. Well, I was out buying you a present at dinner time. But maybe I've wasted my money if you're giving in to temptation already. What, Prezi? Tickets for something. Where are they? Gym memberships. Gym? Yeah. Thought it was something we could do together. I booked us an induction for this afternoon. 
What about work? Well, I've got my lads clearing out the yard. You can get your lot to hold the fort, can't you? Come on. It'll be fun. Mm. Now then, what can I get you? Oh, I'm not stopping, actually. I'm just grabbing a cake. Oh, I thought... Shh. That's what they say, isn't it? Shh. <laughs> I was just having a little chat with his missus. She reckons he wants to run away and join the library <laughs> services. <laughs> I can imagine him doing that. Sparky thing, isn't she, your missus? I, I'd appreciate it if you didn't yeah, yeah, talk yeah, about yeah, my... Yeah, 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 yeah. Silence, please. People are reading. Right. Tea. Three. Shh. Sugars. Oh! Oh, my legs feel like jelly. Is that a feel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can we go? If you try and do stuff without telling me and your mum again, you're dead. OK. We're all gonna die, Mr Harris. Roy's after you. He's got some freebies for you to say sorry. You should think so and all. It's well dark. Go on, I can I'll catch you up. Can you see why I came down hard on you, son? Well, I knew you were about the piercing and that, but not this. My job is to keep you safe. And if you go off mutilating yourself, I don't know what kind of other daft things you're going to get up to, do I? If I know I can trust you, I can cut you a bit more slack. I'm not stupid. I never said you were. Look, this is just a tryout. Don't let me down, eh? Dad. What? Could I have a bat for a pair? Come here. <laughs> well? Ah, yeah, uh, Rosie, yes. Thomas says you got some freebies for what you did. Takes after her mother, that one. <laughs> what did he do? Beans me out for eating one tiny bit of something. Oh, that is shocking. It's purchased elsewhere. So? It is against establishment policy. You can't blame people for eating their own scranny here. Where's my food? It's coming and a little patience will be appreciated. Come on! Look, Rosie, this is not a good time. Perhaps if you came back later. Well, everyone's waiting around hungry. Come on, help yourselves. That'll do for me. <laughs> I, no, I, I'm afraid I cannot permit this. Oh, oh, come on, Roy, chill out, will you? No, I don't. I will not chill out. I have warned you. Put those sandwiches away or I will confiscate them. <laughs> God, it's like school. Right, right, OK. Come on, come on. Oh, come on. No, no, oh, no! Oh, no. Leave. Get oh, out. Oh, no, no. It was you that did that, wasn't it? Well, I witnessed it. Go on, get out. Cruffy, shh. I've ordered some food, remember? Right. Oh, the hell, be good if she's missed this. Uh, police, police. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> the sandwich police! <laughs> uh, I, I, I need to report a, a flagrant flouting of, of, a, of an establishment's bylaws. <laughs> Hello? Yes, yes, um, th there's a man in my cafe, oh. and, and he's eating his own sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> hey, tell him, to, tell him to send a chopper cropper. They can winch you to safety. <laughs> come on, come on, get out, we're closed now. Please, come on, get out, we're closed. Not again. Out! Police, police. Oh, you're back. I was the only moon. We're gorgeous. Oh, well, it's lovely to have you back. <laughs> Don't go on, missus. They'll have you. Oh, yeah, who's that, then? The murder squad. Oh, Lord. Best of Mrs Peacock, I believe. Welcome, welcome, and thrice welcome. I have a bottle of champagne on ice. Oh. Yeah, well, Claire's still feeling a bit travel sick. I've got down the sandwich, use of toilet, interfering with the free newspaper, salt... Oh, I've written assault here. Force of habit. Unauthorised use of salt. Have I missed anything? <clears throat> the rules of this establishment are clearly communicated to all our patrons. 
I, I'm sure you'll appreciate it. It's when lines are crossed that, that there needs to be some recourse. What's happened? Was there any aggression displayed when these uh, rules of yours were broken? Has he done something? No. Of course he was aggressive. He's an hey, outlaw. Please, please. Uh, aggressive would help. Um, his behaviour could not be described as aggressive. Not, not as such. Look at this. Did he do this, Roy? Uh, no, no, I didn't. Who did then? Uh, me. It was an accident. Actually. You say this fellow works locally? A across the way at the builder's yard. Well, have you talked to him? Told him his behaviour's unacceptable. He knows fine well his behaviour's unacceptable. I imagine I... you get a, a number of proprietors contacting you over similar kinds of disputes. Not usually before there's been a scrap. But I get the impression you're not the fisticuffs type? Uh, no. In which case, maybe a quiet word away from your premises where these rules of yours aren't going to get broken? Our entire society is founded upon the, the, the setting down and, and adherence to laws and codes. Formal and informal. Without these, the civilised world would descend into chaos and anarchy with, with those who care least about their fellow man becoming powerful. Surely you as a law enforcement officer understand that. Uh, OK, I get the picture. I'll have a word. A word? I'll tell him the world is teetering on anarchy and he's responsible. Mr Cropper, I'll do my best, OK? Thank you. <laughs> Thought it nice to be home then, Mrs. Peacock. Mm. <laughs> Are you ready to be killing all that flesh all yet? Oof, not unless you want me to sit down your back. Are you sure it's travel sick? And not that second carafe of red wine you had last night? Oh. Hey! Where are you sneaking off to? Me? Nowhere. Just giving you a chance to settle yourselves in. Ah, we'll sit back now. We've brought you something back. Oh, I? Ah, it's in the bag. I hope you like it. I have to order it in French. Le Boeuf, European recipes for beef English edition. Oh, fabulous. And we works out if you cook us one a month. We'll be in our forties by the time we finish it. That's if I'm still here. Well, we talked about that, didn't we? And you can live with us as long as you like. We said it when we got engaged, and it's still true now that we're married. I meant if I was still breathing. You talked about it, did you? Only that you're welcome here. Yeah? Thanks. Exaggeration is not something that I am prepared to stoop to, particularly when dealing with the law. And saying that the whole civilised world was about to crash down wasn't exaggerating. To say that he was aggressive would have been an exaggeration. The rest are standby. Roy. This man has intimidated you, reduced you to tears, made you feel at odds with your regulars. OK, he might not have biffed you over the head with a baseball bat, but the impact has been the same. In law, accuracy is paramount. I, I was intimidated, yes, but that was not the question. The question was, was he aggressive? And I would have to say, in answer to that... If I'm honest with you, when I saw that police car, I imagined the worst. What, that, that, that he killed me? No. What then? I know the past, the past, but I can't help but remember that you once tried to take your own life. Oh, Haley, you don't need to remind me about how stupid I, know, I am. I know, and I know I promised that I wouldn't mention it again, but you've been so down. Uh, down, yes. Stupid, no. Not, not selfish and, and cruel and careless like before. But I, I know what I put you through, and I swore that I'd never do anything as unforgivable again. I don't even know what that man were doing in here. He'd no right. I'd bide him. Yes, he said you'd had a word. It seemed to amuse him. Look, I'd, I'd appreciate some time on my own, if you don't mind. Could be out, couldn't it? Let's say someone was eating an illegal sandwich. What's an illegal sandwich? A sandwich made out of a poor eagle. Honest? Nah. Hey, might be a rat, though. One of the chicken places near the kennels got closed down for selling deep-fried rat. Can we go and ask him? No. I'm meant to be keeping you out of trouble. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, Mr. Cropper. Officer. This uh, gentleman has something to say to you. Uh, sir. Uh, the officer tells me you're upset because of me. He reckons I've threatened you. I, I never uh, not threatened as such, more disrespecting the rules of his establishment. 
Disrespecting, was it? Well, I, I... Under the circumstances, I feel an apology is probably the best course of action. I don't think any of us wants to protract this any more than it has been already. Apology? And a shaking of hands. Certainly. Uh, Mr. Cropper, if I've crossed the line with any of these rules he's on about, was there anything in particular you want me to apologise for, or will the general one do? No, I, I accept. It's accepted your apology. Whoa, 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 whoa. you know, since I haven't given it yet. He's a bit keen, isn't he? <laughs> right, where was I? Uh, Mr. Cropper, if I've broken any of your many rules, I am proper sorry. And a uh, handshake. Is that that, then? Oh, I think so. Yeah, happy, Mr. Cropper. Thank you. <laughs> you perked up. You know, you said you were worried about your dad. Well, he's just not himself, like he's got something on his mind. Are you sure it's something and not someone? I find they stand the side of the sofa, and it ain't mine. Oh, no, not again. I ordered some food before, didn't I? Um, Don't remember getting it. We, we are closed. What? We're closed. I have been more than tolerant with you. I haven't listened to your petty little rules and games. You're a trespasser. You can call the police. Get my police mate over again to make you shake my hand, eh? Told me he joined the force because of watching the Sweeney. Now he feels like he's patrolling Postman Pat's patch. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, call your wife. She's got a governor, hasn't she? Lucky you took her out burst in good spirits. Next time she might catch me on a bad day. You leave Hayley out of this. She's very brave if you think about it. Shouting the odds at me down in that builder's yard. All them ropes and pulleys and tools. It's lucky there wasn't an accident. But what, what is it that you want? Right now. I'll have egg, chips, sausage, beans, tomato, full works, or except the black pudding. All that blood. Nasty. <laughs> hey! You're supposed to carry her in, not carry her out. That's exactly what I say. I've got to get out here to get her back in the one, though. <laughs> anyway, where have you been? Rovers. Oh, why? Oh, why? What's oh, why about? Ashley. Am I missing something? Well, that's not usually she does it, isn't it? Come here, you! <laughs> get you back in there! No, no, no. I'm sure I said poached, not fried. You didn't actually specify. <laughs> I'm sure I did. You said... Torched. I think that egg is quite acceptable. Sorry, what was that? It was, um... No. No. Now, don't sit down. I said, don't sit down. Stand up. Stand up. I will make you, I will make you a porch stick. Say it. Say it! No. I, I, I can't. Hey, all right. What the hell's going on? Uh, Miss Matisse, so he's just doing a bit of after hours, eh? <laughs> he slipped on some oil. <laughs> Slip, did he? <laughs> you okay, Roy? Yeah, he's fine, he's fine, he's fine, aren't you, Roy? Aren't you, Roy? No. No, I'm not fine. I'm not fine at all. <laughs> you think he'd have a rule about mopping up spilt oil? Shut up. He's got a rule about everything else. Do you want me to get rid of him, Roy? <laughs> Why are you his bouncer? Roy, 
Tell them we're fine. You don't want me to waste it, do you? Get out. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, what you learn, Roy? What you learn? I said <laughs> out. No, what? No. Oh, Roy. Don't bother turning up for work tomorrow. I'll have my money then. Sue me. Go on, get out of here. I never want to see your face again. Oh, get up and haven't paid you for that lovely food. I'll take out your wages then, so no need to sue me. <laughs> I said. I know what you said, but it's not to do with you, isn't it? Not that. Not. <laughs> Is it to do with me now? I wasn't planning to sit down long anyway, mate. Tin pot yard you've got. And all the builders been after me. He's welcome to you. Hear that, Croppy? Someone else has been headhunting me. I was poached. <laughs> <laughs> it touches him, does it? Oh. You all right, Roy? Yeah, yeah, it's fine, fine, fine. Waste of space. Yes. yes. Well, at least that's that, eh? Hey, it's over. Mm. Come on, I'll make us all a nice cup of tea. Yeah. Waste of space. Yes. Waste of space. Roy, it was nearly eight o'clock. Vera's down there on her own. What are you doing still not dressed? Do you know what time it is? Uh, yeah, well, look, much as I despise myself for feeling this way, I, I'm not up to the cafe this morning. Oh, right. I know these last couple of weeks have been difficult, but Vince is off the scene now. Oh, yes, I, I must thank Charlie for that. He stepped in when I couldn't cope, didn't he? It wasn't like that. Wasn't it? Well, my attempts to strike Vince were pathetic, to say the least. I, I must have missed him by a good six inches. Yeah, but you tried to stand up for yourself, and I know how hard that must have been for you. Yeah, it's not exactly my forte, is it? But still, at least all our customers now know what a pathetic creature I am, that I need other people to fight my battles for me. Nobody thinks that about you. Don't they? Well, I do. Why shouldn't other people? Tea, Fred? Lovely. We were just talking about Paris. Saying how romantic it was. Say what you like about the French. And people do. They've got three things going for them. They know romance, they like a drink, and they have no truck with vegetarians. Well, they can't be all that bad then, can they? Ta. Well, I might go back there myself. When the weather improves. I love Paris in the springtime. I love Paris in the fall. You see what I mean? Give over. Kiss your wife and drink your tea. I love Right, well, Vera's not right happy about it, but at least it's quieter now. You shouldn't have taken the day off work. Close the cafe, I told you. Roy, you have got to snap out of this. Do you know, on some occasions when I've, I've, I've walked past that chip shop out there, there's a gang of views that, that hang around outside, hooded tops, early expressions, and they never fail to make some attempt to unnerve me. Reluctance to move out the way, hard stares, it, can be quite intimidating. Roy, they're just kids. But, yes, but, but if Tommy's there, or Kevin, well, there's no sign of this, this adolescent surliness. In fact, you wouldn't know there were teenagers there at all. So it must be something in me that alerts them to, to my weakness. Hi, Steve. Um, try white wine, please, Shelley. Can I get you one? Uh, no, you're all right. I've got to get going. Oh, right. Um, see ya. Listen, love, I can't stop. Um, just to say I can't make my gym this afternoon. I want to finish that facing if I can. Well, it's all right. I'm a big girl. I don't need an escort. Are you going anyway? Yeah, of course I am. I can't wait to see your face when I slip into that dress. I'm impressed. You seem so happy together. <laughs> We've had our ups and downs, believe me. Who hasn't? But you seem, I don't know, you're good mates, aren't you? Me and Ian seem to have lost that bit. The funny thing is, we were never happier when we didn't have two halfpennies to rub together. Don't start me gossiping about the boss, Justine. You'll get me sacked. Hey, you may be on his payroll, but you're my mate, right? 
all the money I pay that place and they've got a what's it of care. They, they can't just let him wander off like that. He could be dead in a ditch for all they know. I told them there was a family crisis. They know where I am. I don't know what the big deal is. Well, being flippant isn't going to help. Look, if you're unhappy there, we can talk about it, but uh, just walking out like this... Oh, look, I'm sorry, I can't do this now. I'm already late for a meeting. Can I leave him here for a couple of hours, pick him up later? Yeah, of course. Sorry I'm such a burden. All right, that's enough. Tell you one thing, though. He's got the ball wing gumption. Justine was after you earlier. Did she get hold of you? I'll ring her later. So, Kevin, at dinner time, said you were planning a holiday. Yeah. Decided where you? Oh, don't care as long as the sun and sea. Got it years since me and Kevin went abroad. Looking forward to it then? Yeah. Been window shopping for bikinis already. As you're one of my favourite lady customers, I'll slip in a bit of brisket and a couple of herb sausages. Give the lad a good feed. I just wrap them up. Nothing wrong with them, is there? Have you ever heard of mouths and gift horses? Go on, then. Very gracious of you. Hey, dear. Some folk. And what's up with you today? You're miles away. All right, I'll come play me up. Found that down at City. Oh! It'll be Audrey's. She'll be wondering where she's lost it. Audrey's, you're joking. That's not back on again. Not you and all. Now, don't you dare malign a good lady's name. There were no to it. I'll be happy for you to find someone nice. It just worries me that you get let down all the time. I'm very grateful for your concern. I'm sorry, Dad. I got wrong in the stick. All right, well. No harm done, I suppose. And just for your own peace of mind, there were no romantic entanglements while you were away. More is the pity. Hey, Roy, if you want me and Stubbs at me bounces here, we will do the job for free bacon butties every morning. Shut up, Jason. Hey, V, have you heard about Charlie smacking Vince? Jason, I said shut it. No, 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 he's all right. He's only saying what everybody's thinking. Uh, Roy, we're a bit low on pasties. It is what you're thinking, isn't it? Yes, I can see it in your eyes. Poor old Roy Cropper needs a real man to fight his battles for him. Roy, nobody here thinks any the less of you because of Vince. Well, I'd like you all to leave, please, because I don't need your pity and I don't want your custom. Hey, what are you on about? Oh, you two, oh, Vera, please. Just... Everyone, out. Thank you. Out you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's been under a lot of strain recently, Vera. I'm so sorry. Oh, he snapped him. He's a man possessed. You want a big burly fella with a net after him? Is a service I've given you. I'm sorry, Vera. Huh. Yes. Roy. Go away. Again, this is discrimination against goths. I said get out. I was a bit depressed when I left. Yeah, but Fred's not on his own, though, is he? He has got us. It's not the same. I mean, as long as I can remember. He's never had much luck with women. There's been plenty of them around, according to you. Yeah, well, no one's ever lasted the course. I mean, Penny King was the latest in a very, very long line. And there was Orchid. He's <laughs> not funny. No. Didn't he propose to Audrey once as well? And Rita. Oh, I like Rita. She'd have made a lovely mother in law. Has no one ever said yeah? Oh, aye. Eve. What a nasty piece of work she was. What happened? She was already married to someone else. Oh, and Maureen. How could I forget Maureen? She actually married him. What happened to that? She ran off to Germany with Kelly Webster's dad a few days after the <laughs> wedding. You're having me on. I am not. Honestly. <laughs> I swear. Can you have a glass with me? No, I've got to get back for the girls. Please. All right, just half a glass.
This is difficult to say, but... When Kevin told me about your holiday, I... I can't explain what it felt like. What do you mean? The idea of the two of you going away together. Oh, come on, Ian, this is dumb. I know, I know, it's ridiculous, but... I can't help the way I feel. We said we weren't going to go there again. This is silly, we're just good mates, that's all. I wish this was just some... <clears throat> stupid midlife crisis, but it's not. I love you, Sally. Ian, no. I like you. I like you a lot, but... Look, it's killing me, seeing you here every day, when all I really want to do is... Ian, a... you've got to stop this. I'm married. I've got a family. Justin is my friend, same as you and Kevin. There can never be anything between you and me, because we're just good friends, and we'd hurt too many people. Yeah. You're right, of course. I'm, I'm sorry. And I'm trying to cope with this. Really, I am, but... I'll be sorry to lose you, Sally, but there's no way you can go on working here while I feel like this. What? <sighs> but that job means everything to me. To my whole family. I know. And I'm sorry, and I wish it were otherwise, but... it's not gonna work. Not like this. It's not there. Look, the lights aren't even on. Jerry yeah, could have phoned. I could have had a lie in. Oh. Well, I were in two minds whether to come in today. Hang on, there's somebody here. Oh. Oh, about time. Ladies, I'm so sorry. Well, he's not feeling very well. He's decided not to open up. Oh, right. Well, I did think were you saying you got chucked out yesterday. We can manage on his own, can't we? Yeah. Uh, oh, no, no, I think it's probably better if you go on for today. Don't worry, you'll still get paid. I'm sorry to muck you about like this. I'm sorry. I, I should have dealt with it myself. I told him you weren't feeling very well. There's no need to lie. The your staff, you tell them what's going on. No, 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 yes, of course, you're right, yes. I, I, shall, I shall go around and see them all and I'll explain the position to them. And what is the position, exactly? <sighs> Hayley, I, I just can't carry on as normal. I know I ought to be able to, but I can't. I tried them on last week and they looked so cool. Mm. And what colour are they? Like we need to ask. They're black. Can I have them? Well, I have to see. Oh, Mum! We did say she could start having a cold and all. Yeah, I know we did, but I'm just worried, Kevin, we're getting ahead of ourselves. I don't see why. Two wages coming in, all the work Ian's put in my way. Yeah, and what if that work dries up? What if I was to lose my job? What? Do you think you might? What are you doing? Well, I just thought I'd join you for a drink. Uh, white wine, please, Shelley, when you're ready. Coming up. Right. Why are you taking me out tonight? What? Well, we haven't had a night out for... No, we've never had a night out, have we? What are you talking about? Why don't you come round to mine at 7.30? We're going to town, eh? Or, better than that, 7 o'clock, cos then you can put Amy in the bath and put her to bed while I get ready. You're a bit pushy, aren't you? I said that to a woman, I'd get me face slapped. Not if you said it to me, you wouldn't. Oh, come on, Steve. You've had weeks to get over, Karen. Isn't it time to move on? Oi, I'll decide when it's time to move on. And when I do, I won't be coming in your direction. Steve, there's no point dragging this out. Dragging what out? Well, we could go on for months like this. Like what? Me, following you around, pretending to bump into you accidentally on purpose. Using Amy as a way to get close to you, Steve. We both know what's going to happen. There's no point fighting it. We might all get together. Flipping heck, I thought Karen was meant... This is all wrong. I like this job. I'm good at this job. I know. Have you got any complaints about my work? Of course not. Because if you have, just, just say so now. You're great at the job. You know that. Well, give me a pay rise then, not the sack. Look, we can't talk about this now. I want to talk about it now. OK, OK. This is unfair dismissal, you know. Very unfair dismissal. You could take me to a tribunal. I'd put my hands up. I'm serious, Sally. You could make a lot of money. Well, I'm not going to sue anybody. When I think of the things I've said to you, it's, it's totally unprofessional. It's harassment, never mind unfair dismissal. Well, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, you said some lovely things. Stupid things. Things I should have kept to myself. Would have done if I'd known I'd get the knockback. 
It's not as simple as that. No, you're right. It's a mess. And I can't see any way out of it. I'll have to take that. It's, uh, Steve for you. Oh. Hi, Steve. Changed your mind about taking me out tonight? Yeah, I have, actually. What do you fancy doing? Are you serious? Aye. About time we had a night out, innit? That is, if you can get a babysit. Yeah, I mean, of course I can. Oh, go on, please, Mum. I'll put Amy to bed before we go out. No, I'll put Amy to bed before we go out, if you like. Uh, well, yeah, uh, I suppose so. <laughs> We're staying in tonight, anyway. All right, there you go. It's a date. Pick you up at seven. Yeah, great. I went down to the bookshop earlier. <laughs> oh, God, I didn't think you'd been out. Yes, I, I was looking for a book on assertiveness. I thought it might help. Good idea. Did you find one? Well, they haven't got the particular one I was after. They said they would order it. I said, well, no, no I'll leave it. I, don't worry. Made the bookshop keeper laugh. <laughs> he said, see why you need it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. Uh, could I have another daiquiri and half a lager, please? Of course, sir. Thank you. Well, I've never eaten in here before, have you? It's supposed to be very good. Well, I don't really care where we are. You know, I can't decide on the lamb or the steak. What are you having? Oh, I don't know about the look. <laughs> you should have seen Amy tonight when I put her down. Yeah? She was so cute. You know, Steve, I think it's really wonderful that you're spending time with her. Well, I can't shirk my responsibilities forever, can I? Besides, I like her. Oh, she likes you. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Look, I know I'm good looking, but try and concentrate on the menu, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Not for me, thanks. You sure? Positive. I feel bad enough as it is. Why? <sighs> Lying to Kevin, cracking on I'm working when I'm not. It's a very small lie. We can get some files out while we drink if it makes you feel any better. I feel guilty. I can't help it. I don't see why. Just being here with you. And don't you trust yourself? Yeah. So you've got nothing to feel guilty about, have you? We're just two people having a drink and a chat. I'm just not sure what we're meant to be chatting about. We're brainstorming. That's what the reps call it. We're trying to find a solution to a problem. And you've made it quite clear what you think we should do. Well, maybe there's something else. I'm open to suggestions. Such as? Well, I don't know. I, see, I don't want you to leave. I want the opposite. I want us to be together. And that is impossible. Why, Sally, why? Do we have to go there again? Look, a couple split up all the time. The kids don't all end up going off the rails. Gemma's got plenty of friends from broken homes. Oh, bully for Gemma! You can't put your life on hold for the kids. The only reason Kevin and I got back together in the first place... What? Go on. Nothing. I wasn't going to say anything. Well, this is great. I'm having a really good time. You having a good time? Steve. Why do you change your mind about taking me out? What, tonight? Oh, yeah, I mean, you didn't seem that keen when I first suggested it. What happened? Mum, I've been doing a lot of the old thinking about me and you, you know? Yeah? I mean, we get on pretty well, don't we? Oh, I think so. Um, we have a daughter, so it's in her best interest that we try and make this relationship work. You are so right, Steve. And I suddenly thought, why am I fighting this? Why shouldn't I take Tracy out? You really thought of that? Well, if she really wants to go out, why not? We'll have a good laugh, won't we? <laughs> oh, Steve. Besides, not like it's going to lead anywhere, is it? Isn't it? No, it's not. Because you know I have no feelings for you. And I never will. No thanks, mate. Actually, yeah. I'll have a rose. Did you pay that, please? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Token of my indifference. 
When I fell for you, I knew you were married. I knew you were out of my league. I'm not out of your league. I could easily... Well, no, not easily. I, I could have forced myself to keep my mouth shut, to put what I felt about you to the back of my mind, to admire you from afar, to, to daydream. But I did for a while, but then I had to come clean. I wish you hadn't. I had to come clean because there was a chance that you felt the same way. It doesn't matter what I feel. Well, why are you doing this to yourself, Sally, eh? Your feelings, your happiness are just as important as anybody else's. Right now, I think it's best if I just... Just... What? Let this chance of happiness pass you by. Because that's what you'll do if you don't give it a try. I could make you happy, Sally. Really happy. I know I could. If you just give us a chance. Get it? I mean, why did you ask me out? Was it just to humiliate me? Well, you kept pestering me. You wouldn't take no for an answer, so I thought I'd take her out. I'll have a captive audience. And then maybe I'll be able to get through to that thick skull of hers. All right, so you set me up. Sex, Steve. No, no. Because now we've got all our cards on the table, We'll be able to carry on with having a nice evening, won't we? Mm. Thanks for the lift. There is another way. Is there? I can't believe I'm thinking this, let alone saying it. Go on. But I know you won't leave Kevin. I accept that. Even though it's... What I want more than anything, but see, what if I was to, um, what if I was to settle for second best? Second best? Oh, come on. We both feel the same way about each other, don't we? I mean, why don't we just have a bit of fun now and again? The girls wouldn't get hurt. Nobody would get hurt because nobody would know. And you could go on working for me. I think the idea's got a lot going for it. No, 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 don't say anything now. I'll let you sleep on it. We're not going on a cruise, Rose. Do you think we're millionaires or something? Dad! Everybody goes in them. The way I see it, it's your mum who's earning the extra money. She should decide how we spend it. Come on, mum, we're waiting. Can we talk about this later? Well, you've not had your breakfast yet. No, I know, I'm not hungry. I've got a bit of a headache. Well, I'll phone Ian, tell him you're not going in. No, I'm fine. See you later. Friends, Mum. His words or yours? Oh, Tracy. Well, it's in Amy's life, and that's enough for now. For now, but... Steve knows how I feel, and... he's not ready for anything more, so that's... it's OK. You can't put your life on hold for him. Oh, and when did you start caring so much about me and Steve? Look, I care about you, love. Well, whatever happens, happens. We're... We're just going to focus on Amy and get that right first. Oh, well, she's a perfect place to start. I'm just glad Steve's finally realised that. Cheers, Mum. Hey, don't get too used to this. <laughs> if you're in a good mood? Any particular reason? Oh, did you have a nice evening? Look, Mum, you're doing me. I didn't just ask the question, will you? We both know you haven't come round just to give me breakfast. What happened? It couldn't have gone any better. 
Really? Mm -hmm. Nice atmosphere. Good food. A few drinks. It was almost romantic. Oh. And then I told her we were never going to end up together, and it kind of put a damper on things. Well, you asked, Mum. You took the poor girl out to dinner? She got the message. I bet she did. If it had been me, I'd have belted you. Mum, you don't know what Trace is like. Subtle isn't in her vocabulary. Oh, and now, thanks to you, she understands the word sensitive as well. Not my problem. You're cruel. It was kind. Do you know, I never thought I'd say this. Do you know who you sound like? Karen. Where have you been? Oh, just at the cafe, Violet. Oh, all right, for some. Have you seen this electric oh. bill? Hey. What's all this for? Oh, I'm just glad you're home. Yeah, and? Missed you, that's all. Right. Mm, I missed you too. Mm. Um, Martin. Yeah. Hiya. Oh, um, we're going bowling. I'm sorry, but I totally forgot that we planned it. Dad thinks we need to bond more. Mm. It's only for the afternoon. Mm, I don't mind. Hey, come with us if you want. Your Craig's going. You don't mind? Well, haven't you got some revision to do? A few hours off won't kill me. Yeah, Dad, give her a break. All right, I just didn't think she'd be interested, that's all. It'll be a right laugh. Oh, don't say that word to Craig. He hates it. <laughs> no, no. You're not making this very easy for me, Linda. What were you saying? Ah. Well, yeah, yeah, well, you know me. I deal in quality, not quantity. Huh. Yeah, I, I know that's what they all say, but then I always deliver. Come on, Dave. Uh -huh. Give it your biggest shot. Go. Oh, 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 come on, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, it's not for a few months. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just ignore them. They're only trying to psych you out. Don't look so depressed. Yeah, have a day off. <laughs> oh, watch this now. This will be a laugh. Come on. Oh no. Come on, Straight down the middle. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. No, you the man. How'd you put up with her? It's called a full front of the bottom, you mate. Yes, for her, that, thank you. Yeah, I would you too. Right, watch this. Come on, watch your back, old man. Yeah, you'll be wearing this before long. Watch this for a championship. Oh, it's nearing off. No! Loser! 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 All right, all right, at least I hit her. Actually, that rubbish, you're embarrassing, man. Yeah, I know, what can I do? You just keep it down, will you? Don't be such a spoil spot. It is called having fun. Yeah, come on, Dad. Do you remember F U N? Yeah, well, that's what you get when you live with an old moose like her. Ouch! <laughs> Cheeky! Very good. I'm on salary. Plus a little bonus. Hey. We had a great month. Share the wealth, that's what I say. Ian, you really don't have to do this. One thing you should know about me, Sally. I never do anything I don't want to do. So then, Craigie, what's all this, uh, you look all about? It's not a look. It's a way of life. Cos I'm not a sheep. <laughs> You're a black sheep. <laughs> You're a freak. <laughs> you lot will never understand. Understand what? That living? Yeah. It's just an excuse for existence. Can we go play some video games now? <laughs> you think I'm made of money, you do, don't you? Yeah, how much do you want? How much you got? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh, we're only joking, Kate. Right. Kate, there's a fiver. That's your lot. All right. Come on, laughing boy. Uh, <laughs> hey. I suppose you two want to be left alone now, then. Well, yeah, <clears throat> I can understand that, so um, I'll go. All right. mm. Your brother's on a different mm. planet. You know, I have really enjoyed myself today. Good. We should do it more often. You're starting to scare me, do you know that? Mm. You are a really good dad. So, 
This is it. Yeah. It's a reference. It's all right, it's a good one. So what are you going to tell Kevin? Blame me. Hmm? Tell him I were a nightmare to work for. Ian. Go home, Sally. Kevin's waiting for his steak. Martin. Thank God that's over. I thought you had a good time. I did, babe. Snacker, that's all. You know, I really felt like we were a proper family today. Yeah, it's been good today. A bit different for you, though, isn't it? Why? Well, I look like a dad. Let's face it, no one's going to mistake you for being David's man. <laughs> so, you're saying I'm immature? No. No, but that's what you meant. Well, come on, we've had a nice day. Let's not spoil it. What, by being childish? Come on, this is stupid. Look, I love you the way you are. We were great for David today. Like a big sister, not like a mum. I don't expect that. Why not? I don't understand. <sighs> yeah, I know you don't. He loves me. Yeah. Drink that. <laughs> Justine swears by the stuff. If it's any consolation, I knew about you and Kev from the moment we met. You don't know what you're talking about. You're a beautiful and intelligent woman, Sally. But you don't know how to lie. See, you might be able to sell this happy family stuff to Kevin and the kids, but... Not to this car salesman. I don't know what to do. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Or get a better lie. I think this is goodbye, don't you? so wound up last night. All I wanted to do was pull my head under the flaming quilt. Yeah, well, you weren't the only one. I was really upset. I don't know why. I don't know what happened. One minute we're having a great time in the bowling, the next you just flaming went off on one. Well, I went off on one? Yeah. God, you should try listening to yourself sometimes. I was exhausted. <sighs> All I wanted was a nice, quiet pint. You know, a day out with the kids, it's more tiring than Saturday night in flaming casualty. Oh, I'm sure they'd love to hear you say Well, that. you know what I mean. Oh, great! Look, I don't need another row, all right? Let's just say, last night, let's just say it was a, a stupid flare-up over nothing, OK? We were both shattered, we both... No, not we, Martin. You! It was all your fault cos you forgot you weren't with your kids anymore. That's a plenty easy mistake to make. Well, and what is that supposed to mean? I haven't got time for this, all right? But you can't go now. I'm going to work. <sighs> yeah, but I don't feel well. You what? I feel... I feel sick. I have done since I woke up. Don't go in today, stop here. We really need to talk. Talk? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a laugh. That's the last thing me and you need right now. So what's the area of the circle? Para squared. Right. So what's the value of pie? Well, oh, after our day's graph, you can't put any value on your mum's meat and potato. Dad, it's not that kind of pie. Well, what sort is it then? I know apple pies are what? One ninety-nine in fresco? Do you mind? I've got a maths test this morning. <laughs> maths? Sounds more like home economics to me. Let them get on with it, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Pie is equal to. 3.142. How did you know that? Just you. Looks at their own work. 
put you some clean overalls in the wash. Oh, thanks. Well, that's the least I could do after I promised you a cooked dinner and you came home to an empty house. I'll make it up to you, Ken. Hey, you already did, and it certainly beats meat and potato pie. <laughs> hey, and the amount Ian pays you, the least he can expect is what, a little bit of overtime now and again? Listen, Mum, if I Oh, I thought you... I heard your voice. To what do we owe the pleasure? Oh, I see. Trouble in paradise, is it? What's he done now? He's not fallen downstairs and broke his neck by any chance, has he? <laughs> yeah, you wish. <laughs> Give it up, Dad, and get used to things. Me and Martin are for keeps. We're stronger than ever. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, you will. You're still breathing, then? I'm just about to call an ambulance. It wasn't that bad. I'm just a bit achy, that's all. Hey, shows you're working hard. Mm. <laughs> I'm proud of you. I'm going to get an orange juice. Do you want one? Yeah, please, sir. Hello, Ted. Charlie. Yeah, again, you'll be able to retire by the time I finish with you. <laughs> <laughs> now then, I need six more bundles of 15 mil copper pipe, chuck in three bags of reducers and three each of tea, stop ends and elbows. <sighs> yeah, well, it's more corner shop than superstore, to be honest with you, but you know how it is. Pays to her on the generous side with these insurance shops. <laughs> Exactly, and I got more money than I know what to do with. Yeah. Anyway, it won't get a waste. I'm sure I'll find a little spot for it somewhere in the corner of my yard. No, no, let's slander those. Yeah. Yeah, just drop it round the site this afternoon, will you? Cheers, Ted. Hi, love. Here you go. What's up? Mm. Don't make any plans for tomorrow night, eh? Hey, <clears throat> sleepyhead. Bad day. Yeah, you could say that. Listen, I'm sorry about this morning, but we just, no, we got off. Forget about this morning. This morning was as good as it got. I went downhill from that. Why? What's wrong? How long have you got? Oh, it's been another red letter day in the life of Martin Platt, all right. <sighs> Meredith. Hmm? Takes me to his office. Sticks me on a final warning. Oh, no. Oh, it's him, not you. He's just been on your case since that suspension. He's just jealous. Uh, of what, exactly? <sighs> you know, as if the job wasn't hard enough without him turning the flaming screw. Well, that's it, now. I'm walking a knife edge. You're a great nurse, Martin. Everyone knows that, most of all him, he is just joking his way around. He won't dare do any more. Well, that's easy said. <sighs> One more mistake and I am down the road. You know, all those years of training and hard slog. Just down the pan, just like that. Look, I know it's hard, but brooding won't help. Besides, there's uh, more to life than work. Oh, get real, Katie. Where would we be if I lost my job? I'd be on the dole. You'd still be at college. We'd have no money coming in. Life won't bear thinking about. Yeah, well, it won't come to that. And even if it did, we'd cope. Because we love each other. And that is all that matters. <sighs> OK, so you've had a bad day. But think of how many worse days we've come through together. And now, well, now we've got so much more to look forward to. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All three of us. We're having a baby. <laughs> Say something. Please. I just... I 
I don't know what to say. Just, just say what you're thinking. What do you think I'm thinking? It's a disaster. A total and utter disaster. What made you think of the Greek island? Well, just a bit different, isn't it? Oh, thank you. you know, I quite fancy cream. I must admit, it looks gorgeous. Oh, yeah? <gasps> and they've got banana boats as well. Yeah, and beautiful beaches. Hey, we could park ourselves in a couple of sunbeds. Let these two go on, then. No way am I going on a banana boat. It's infantile. Give over. You'll have a whale of a time. <sighs> Can we go somewhere colder? Oh, yeah, good idea. Why not stay at home? <laughs> Why do you want to go somewhere colder? There's no way I'm getting a tan. We forgot. As soon as it's dawn, she's got to get back in her coffin. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice that Dev and Sunita are pleased with your work. Well, it should be. A lot of grafting. Oh, I know. I suppose it's not like other jobs, is it? I mean, at least working in a pub, you get a few tips. The building work, you don't get anything, do you? Mm. Satisfaction of a job well done. Well, that's about it, you go. Only. I couldn't help hearing you on the phone this morning when you were ordering. And? Well, I might have got it all wrong, but it sounded like... It sounded like you were ordering too much stuff. <laughs> I'm sick. I need to make a habit of listening in on my phone calls, dear. No, I was bringing you a drink, remember? Well? Were you? Was I what? Ripping Dev off? I didn't say that. That's what you meant, though, wasn't it? Well, as it happens, I was over-ordering, yeah. Well, it's only your damn business. It doesn't seem right, that's all. There's Dev and Sunita's skin, and you're making money out of it. It's not like they have to put their hands in their pockets, though, is it? Yeah, but it's like you're going behind their backs. What? So I should have discussed it with them first? Look, it's how you run a small business. If you didn't, you'd go under. I'm sure Dev knows that as much as anybody else. Well, maybe. Of course he does. You think when there's a power cut, he doesn't go claiming for lots of freezer contents? Everybody rips off the insurance, including me. What I don't do is rip off my mates. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, you're good at saying that, aren't you? After you've hung, drawn and courted me. Well, at least this time you're not accusing me of having an affair. Where are you going? Out. Oh, Charlie, look. Don't. I didn't think it through, all right? Yeah. Well, there's something I didn't think through at all. Moving in with you. Don't say that! It's like you're waiting for me to let you down just because Peter did. You know what? I'm starting to feel sorry for the poor bloke. I bet everything was fine until you pushed him to it with your paranoia. Yeah. Well, who knows? Maybe you've done the same to me. Charlie! <laughs> Tommy's got a mole, he's dead cute. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, have you? What's it called? <laughs> oh, that kind of mole, you lazy. Oh. Everybody's got moles. Oh, not there they am. Come <laughs> <laughs> on, then, where is it? Never you mind, Jenny. Oh, come on, tell us. No! <laughs> I think even Rose is a little bit excited. Don't matter how hard she tries not to show it. That's all I want from Kev. I just want them to be happy. I just want them to get the best out of life. Yeah, well, they are. You're happy as well, aren't you? Yeah, of course. What is this? Guilt pangs because you're a working mother? Maybe. Yeah, well, don't. Mm. Fancy another? Yeah, may as well finish what I started eh? <laughs> So long as I don't have to carry it home. <laughs> Hey, darling. Hey. Uh, pipe for me and one for the missus. You've been ages. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, seeing as though you won't come and talk to me, I thought I'd come and talk to you. Not in here, you won't. Why not? You won't come home. Am I just supposed to sit there and wait for you? Are you all right? Come on, let's go. 
I said, are you all right? Yeah, she's fine. Uh, I asked her, not you. Oh, Tommy. Has he done all to upset you? No, I'm fine. Well, you don't look fine. Yeah, well, I am all right. You heard the girl. And what's it got to do with you? It's my pub, that's one. I don't want any trouble. There's not going to be any. Just leave it, Tommy. <laughs> look, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be so long. I was just scared you weren't coming up. I'm sorry. I've acted like a selfish idiot. I know that. But... I should have stayed. I shouldn't have left you on your own, but it's all just been such a shock. I just needed time to think. And have you? Yeah. Look. What's happened has happened. It's no good as wishing otherwise, is it? We're just going to have to make do, aren't we? Hey. Somehow, we'll get through. It's OK. Look, I really am sorry. I shouldn't have said what I did. As soon as you explained it, I realised how stupid I'd been. Yeah. Well, you do have this tendency to go building things up out of nothing. Yeah. I don't know how you put up with me. Because I love you. And I'm trying, Shell. I really am trying. But sometimes you make things very difficult. Feeling better? Oh, yeah. Lords. <clears throat> Good. Because we can get through this. Mm -hmm. We just have to be practical, that's all. Mm. Oh, I mean, look at this place. It's tiny for a start. Mm. We'll get somewhere bigger. Mm, well, it's not really as simple as that, is it? Well, you're not earning and things aren't going too well at work. God knows what's going to happen now. Oh, it'll be all right. Anyway, we've got nine months to think about all that. And we've just got to be realistic. Mm. What about your studies? Mm. I mean, it's really going to screw them up. You're already miles behind. Yeah, well, I don't care about my studies. This is more important, isn't it? I mean, I know it's not the best time to get pregnant, but what does it matter, really, when we're going to spend the rest of our lives together anyway? You... you do want to, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. Oh, well, then. Why are you talking about all the boring stuff? I mean, you've got to be a little bit excited. You're going to be a dad. I'm already a dad. Yeah, but this is different. This is ours. I'm not saying that I don't want one. Okay, all right. But I thought we decided to wait. Oh, why are you bringing all this up? It's happened now, and it's so all we'll, we'll just have to cope. There are other ways of coping, aren't there? What are you saying, mine? Come on, spit it out. I think you should have an abortion. So, still no explanation, eh? You come and go as you please, and every hour you dump yourself on us, and we're not meant to ask why. It's a home, Tom. Would you rather I went somewhere else? No, but I'd like to know what he's done to get you in this state. <sighs> I thought you'd be glad. I thought you wanted to split up. And are you? Splitting up? Or is it just you chucking your rattle out at pram again? <sighs> I am not a kid! God, you are just like him, thinking I don't know me or mind or what Well, I then want. stop behaving like a kid. You tell us you want to be with him, that, oh, if I keeps, and then you're back here in tears every five minutes. Do you know, I've checked, and you're right, we're already up on last year's figures. Well, that's great. But, um, see, the only figure I can think about right now is yours. <sighs> Sometimes it feels like they care more about me than you do. Oh, yeah. Well, you tell them you're pregnant. You see how much they care then. That support me. Well, if I want the baby. Of course. Of course you want it. Not without you. I'm not after a doll to wash and dress. I want our baby, your son or daughter. You are such a good father, Martin, the way you are with David and Sarah. Well, sometimes I just get so jealous because you, you're so good with them. And my dad, well, he tries, but... 
I can't talk to him like Sarah talks to you. Coming to you with all her problems and that, that is a sort of, sort of father I want my baby to have. You, you do know it's your baby, don't you? I, I have not been with anyone else. Of course I know it's mine. Well, good. Then why? Why don't you want it? And don't say I'm too young. Well, you are. What, are you just making excuses? We talked about having kids mine. You said you wanted them, so what has changed? It's just... Maybe I'm too old for all this, hmm? <laughs> yeah? Well, when did you decide that? I mean, when did you suddenly get too old, Marty? Cos I never noticed you suddenly getting old. Well, look, I'm 40 next. I haven't got the patience for kids running around the place. Well, I've done all that. <sighs> but that's not fair, Martin. Man, you thought I'd want children. I mean, you talk about us being right for each other and, and being together and stuff, but did you think I'd never want a baby? If I'm too young now, wh what is the right age, eh? 20? 30? Oh, what is that going to make you then? 50? If you feel too old now, well, how are you going to feel then? Look, I just don't know what to say. I haven't got all the answers, right? I love you, Martin. And I want to spend the rest of my life with you. And I want your children. I want loads of children. And I want them all to be just like you. And I want to be a good mother. And I want to marry you and be a good wife. And it's not a stupid, childish dream. Come here. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, OK? I'm sorry that I shouted. It's just all been such a shock, that's all. <laughs> Baby. But it'll be all right, okay? We'll be all right. Timing is not right, but when is it ever all right? Hey. Look. We'll manage. I'm gonna be a dad again. How do you feel about that? So you don't want me to get rid of it? We're having this baby. Ooh. Hi, Gran. Oh, hi, sweetheart. Busy? Mm-hmm. Well, I bet you're looking forward to the shop opening again, aren't you? Uh, get back to work. Oh, can't wait. Um, I've just seen Candice. She didn't know anything about going out with you tonight. Oh. So, are you not going out with her tonight? Because, um, you said you were. Yeah, I know. I, well, I just... I didn't want... What? Look, I'm going on a date, OK? With a fella? Yes. Look, this is why I didn't want to say anything, because then the questions start, and then you start putting pressure on me, then you start worrying. No, I'm, um, I'm glad you're going out with boys. I, I hope you have a lovely time. Yeah, nip down to the salon later, if you like. I'll do your hair. Really? Mmm. You're not going to ask me all about it? Well, um, you'll tell us when you're ready. To you, ma'am. Oh, yes, please, my love, yes. <sighs> so, how's Bethany doing at school? You're not even going to ask me how old he is or where I met him? Well, if, if you want to tell us. Yeah, I mean, you know, you said yourself, my darling. I mean, you have been living in a goldfish bowl for the last year. I mean, we quite understand if you don't want to tell us. Yeah, as long as you're happy. Yes, that's all that matters. Well, if you must know, his name's Scooter. I met him on the bus. There was only one seat left and he gave it to me. He's 19 and he has got a job and he lives on the other side of town. So there you go. You happy now? Kevin! Hi! Oh, just doing paperwork. Do you think Apple's a stupid name for a baby? Oh. I do. We're not on to first names already, are we? No, nope, we can't decide on names yet. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. Not until we've decided on its surname. What are you saying? You want me to marry you? Will you? One step at a time, eh? Mm, yeah, yeah. So, um, when are we going to tell people the news? Well, I don't think you should tell them yet. I mean, you've not even been to the doctors and I don't want to put a dampener on things, but what, the first three months? 
really risky for a baby. So I think we should just keep it to ourselves for a bit. Okay. At least I'm used to keeping things from my mum and dad. Mm. God, I feel so much better. I really felt like I'd lost you. Yeah, well, you're not going to get rid of me that easy. It wasn't just the baby. It was when I proposed the way you rejected the idea. But that wasn't nice. Yeah, well, I wasn't expecting it, was I? It was like I'd come at you with a knife or something. I didn't know where I stood for you. Yeah. Well, you do now. Yeah. <laughs> Good. You know, we're going to have to get a bigger flat. Because you cannot swing a cat round here, let alone bring a baby. <laughs> and I want a nursery with a cot and, like, mobiles hanging off the ceiling. Yeah. And loads of teddy bears, because I love teddies. <laughs> oh, and you know, I don't, I don't want to know where it is. If I can tell, you know, because I, I want it to be a surprise right up until the last minute when you tell me. Because you'll be there, won't you? Of course I'll be there. Yeah, and you'll be the one that says, it's a girl or it's a boy, and you'll lift it up to me and I'll hold it close and forget about all the pain and stuff and well, nothing will matter then, will it? <laughs> Just you, me and our baby. <laughs> and you'll be glad I never took the pill and it'll all be brilliant and... <laughs> And we'll be a family. A real family. You never took your pill. I do not believe this. Yeah, but I, mean, I just want to feel safe. What by getting pregnant? By tricking me! Well, it wasn't a trick. Of course it was a trick! You've not took your pill and you didn't tell me. It's a stupid, childish trick. Don't call me childish. I'll stop acting like a kid. <sighs> Martin. Copper. Blimey, it's Lady Penelope. <laughs> I see more of you now than when you worked here. Just off to get some new quotes for office supplies. Rolling up in this gives me a psychological advantage, I reckon. Mm. So what are you doing here? Not that I'm complaining. Oh, just because I'm working full time doesn't mean to say I can't spoil you now and again. Mm. I've bought you yeah, a custard slice. Don't say I don't give you anything. Mm. I can't believe how great this looks. Excellent. Now, if you can get the Ankos and Swinton shops done in the same sort of time, then I will be a very happy man. Shouldn't be a problem. You've got to pull out all the stops for your mates, haven't you? This is a real new start for us, after everything that's happened. Mm. You know, another couple of days, the place is going to look just like it did. Oh, no, it won't. Oh, yes, it will. No, I've got plans for this place. I always hated the freezer where it was. People got frostbite with fish fingers before they got to it till. Yeah, maybe I liked it where it was. <laughs> what, circa 1960? Uh... Nope. As I said, I've got plans for this place. I was telling Mike over shows I've got a lot to answer for. Right, <laughs> I best get off. Uh, not before you take this. Mm. Thanks, Charlie. Finished the bodywork on that car earlier, so thought I'd bring it back. I was hoping one of your lads might be able to drop me back. Um, Jimmy could do it. Look, I tell you what, we practically finished for the day. Um, that car you've been using, um, take it for the weekend. Take care of home yourself. I'm sure you'd appreciate showing off to the neighbours. What, that convertible she was driving this morning? Oh, you do realise we might not come back. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ian. Pleasure. 
It's funny how you always end up boozing by yourself, Eplat. We'll have to start calling you no mates. Come on! Out! Oh! Hello. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, love, I was miles away. Mm. You're still fretting about the invoice, eh? It's not going to hurt Dev, the insurance company pays. It just doesn't seem right, that's all. <sighs> I've been through these three times now. He's been inflating the figures, claiming for stuff he hasn't even used. I can't believe Shelley could know about this. She's my best mate. Yeah, well, whether she does or not, the fact remains our mate Charlie has been robbing my insurance company blind. I can't believe it. This is going to ruin everything. Do you have to say anything? It's the insurance that'll pay, not us. <sighs> Sunita, never mind that this is fraud, but that miserable piece of... Sh you know, he's counting on the fact that we're not going to say anything because he rescued us from a fire. Now, how can anybody capitalise on someone else's misery like that? This is going to cause such bad feelings. Bad feelings? Well, after what we went through, Maya burns down the shops, nearly murders me and you, and all Charlie can see is pound signs. What are you going to do? Do? I'm going to sack him, for a start. And then our mate Charlie's going to find out what bad feeling really is. Pink wafer? What kind of goth are you? It's a biscuit. You said to me yesterday, it's a lifestyle, Dad, not a fashion. Now, bourbon, that's a proper goth biscuit. Idiot. Plastic goth. Hiya, love. Come in. Uh, I'm, I'm not stopping. Are you in or out? Actually, Dad, I did come round to ask if you wanted a paper picking up. Where's mine? Uh, with David. Oh, right. Well, if you're on your own, you can stop for your dinner. Uh, no, it's OK. Oh, don't be daft. No, it's all right, Mum, honestly. Go on. You're too proud to beg, eh, aren't you? <laughs> well, I thought you'd like it if we all sat down and had dinner as a family. Depends. If I have to spend me one day rest on tiptoe, then thanks, but no thanks. Yeah, to be fair, you've been a right moody cow recently. Oi, would you say that to Rosie Webster? Uh, it's full steam ahead. For Ancoats and Swinton. On the subject of last-minute checks, Charlie... Go uh, on. What can I do you for? It's just a few things I needed to ask you about. Mm -hmm. These invoices... I've been going through them again. Wouldn't have thought you had the time. I made time. So why don't you talk me through this? And this? And why is this for £500 worth of timber when no one else would charge more than two for the amount I need? If you're unhappy, just say. I'm unhappy. Every single material you bumped up the order and hoped I wouldn't notice. Death. <laughs> Dev, look, I know it's like Sleepy Hollow and those corner shops of yours, but you've done your time in the big bad world. Yeah, so talk me through it. I'm all ears. Why is this worrying you? No one's going to lose out. Except me <laughs> and my insurers. You're getting wound up about nothing here. Yeah, but if it's nothing, then why am I finding out like this? Because I didn't think it would be a problem. <laughs> well, you, you, you think I'd be happy to take part in a fraud? Fraud? Oh, come on, you've forked out enough from no, premiums no, no, over the years, no, no. have you? You thought that I would help you defraud an insurance company I'm asking to pay out for seven burnt-out shells in the same night. We're talking about one shop, Deb. It's small potatoes. And still you're making out like we're in this together! Now, I am a victim of a crime. I will not be an accessory to another one to help you line your pockets. No, I, I want these invoices replaced. I want the keys to the other shops. And, Charlie, you are off the job. <laughs> Well, no, you can't. You can't go through there. She's doing lady-type things, not fit for a man's eyes. Lucky, I'm not just any man. Uh, no, seriously. Just can you just sit there, have a pint, and then wait till we get the all clear? I live with a violet. There's no mysteries about that. Oh, last time I put her on sentry duty. I know. Who can he trust these days, eh? Well, what do you think? Very nice. You know, and I don't know what you and Sunita talk about when you get together for your little powwows. Uh, excuse me, no consultation involved. This is all my own work, thank you very much. No, it's not clothes you talk about, it's business. My business. That's why Dev just sat me. Thanks for that, Shell. Here's to you. I'd have never have done it if I was with anyone else. Great. I just wish you hadn't done it at all. 
need you to tell me everything's going to be all right. I can. Right. Okay. Oh, don't go storming off. I'm not storming off. I'm leaving. Oh, that's mature. After all the selfish things you've done, go on. Go on, I'm going to top it all. I'm doing you a favour. Well, no, you're not. I mean, all right, I've been angry, but I felt cheated. Who wouldn't? I don't want us to split up. How can I stay, Martin? You can start by putting your bags down. I can't. Why? If I stay... Then so does the baby. Okay, okay. Okay. Well, let's keep it to ourselves. But I did warn you. Maybe that's how you do your business. But I did say to you, you've got to be careful because they are our friends. OK. So you were right all along. So you don't want what I Buster got to buy for you. Your nights on the town. Your fancy dresses. And these. I'm so sorry I inflicted these on you. Oh. Morning. Hiya. What, is there no tea ready? No, I haven't had time yet. Right, it's okay, I'll go and make some. No, you're all right, I'll make some later. What, and die of thirst? I haven't even had a drink yet this morning. We all overslept. I'll make a pot of tea later, eh? You go in the bar and get things started. Well, I'm going to pass out. Hey, you've got some blood on you, here. Have I? Yeah. God, it looks really sore. It's on the other one as well. Oh, no, no, it's all right. No, it's not. Have a look for yourself. Well, you know. Well, what's the matter with him? Nothing. You want to be an assistant manager? Yeah. Why? So you can keep wheelie bins in gainful employment? Oi, it shows I'm interested in my work. Do you know what an assistant manager does? No, you'd have to explain it all to me. <laughs> and why would I want to do that? Because I'm your son. Because it's a family business that someday I will take over. Well, family business or not, my boy, I have paid good money to get my job. Look, I shouldn't be driving a van. Why? Haven't you passed your test? I can do better than that. Well, you haven't done so far, have you? Because this is your most successful career to date, and you ain't much cop at that. You don't think I can do anything, do you? You can't. I can. Really? Well, then why aren't you halfway to Rochdale by now? Because, look, that is where you're supposed to be. I oh, know. I'm going. No, you're not. You're standing here stalking me and wasting my time. You, Jamie, are a liability. Assistant manager? Laugh? <laughs> it makes me want to cry. I believe you went to see Dev. What's this? The old Bush Telegraph, is it? Smoke signals, maybe. Bongo drums. I saw Sunita in the street. Yeah. Well, I had to apologise to Dev to keep him happy. Not that it did. So do I get an apology now? Why well, would you need one? Did you really sleep at the yard last night? I told you I slept at the yard. Felt more welcome there than I did here. You were the one who was vicious and... and nasty. What's that supposed to mean? I was the one who felt like leaving. I wanted to run away. Yeah, but you didn't, did you? It was me who had to sling my hook. Charlie, you hurt me. Not half as much as you hurt me. Oh, this is great. You've changed the layout as well. That is far better. Oh, yeah, it's much more modern. And you can find your way around. You can see where everything is. I like them lights. The whole place is so smart. Yep, it's just as we intended. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the prices have gone up and all. Did you intend that? 
They haven't. They're just the same as they were before the fire. Your spuds are dearer. <sighs> That's just the time of year. There's nothing we can do about that. Yes, so you pass it on to the customer. Oh, I trust Vera to find something to complain about. You do it all the time. Do what? Let me down. Then act surprised. I never let you down. Well, sometimes you don't intend to, but that's worse. Worse? It shows how little you care. I do care. You mean everything to me. You bully me. And then you wonder why I lose my temper. <laughs> Charlie, you pulled the rings out of my ears. All right, I feel bad about that. In fact, I've discussed it with myself. But it was you. Going on the way you did, taking Dev's side, putting his feelings before mine. I didn't! There you go, denying everything. It's last night all over again. Like coffee. Oh, if you've got time. No, you've chosen a good time. Uh, we're busy first thing, and then it dies down a bit, and then we get really busy again in the afternoon. Well, I can see why you like working here. Yeah, it's a bit better than working in Kevin's scruffy little garage. Do you know what? I used to put me all these clothes on when I went over there? But coming here, I feel like I have to dress up. Top. And uh, that's my boss, Ian. When I say my boss, you know that we got friendly with him and his wife before I started here. Yeah, you said. So I don't really feel like I've got a boss in the usual sense, you know. It's more like coming in to see a friend every day. Sounds wonderful. Ah, oh, well, it is. Ooh, I hear goths. You're gonna go mad. Hey, remember what we said. Hiya, Rosie. Hiya. Rosie, did you ever see the Adams family? No. Oh, not again. I was just wondering why you'd not brought Lurch with you. Right, can we have a lift or not? Better than that, my little goth son, because me and your mother are coming with you. Aren't we, Ange? Yeah, we thought it'd be nice. Hey, and we've been rehearsing. We know all the lingo, don't we? See you later, alligator. Yeah, in a while, crocodile. See, so I'm not going to show you up or up like that. The only thing I can't decide is whether to wear my suit or put my sports jacket on. Yeah. No. No, no, you cannot be serious. What, you think my sports jacket would be wrong? I'm saying... Oh, come on! No, you can't come, no way! Why not? You'd be the oldest there by a mile, and you wouldn't like it, honest! Oh, we've been looking forward to that, haven't we, Angie? <laughs> I can't do it, Tom. I just can't do it. I'm sorry. Look, we're only kidding you, but don't oh, worry. Right. Look at the faces, they look proper miserable. Yeah, but I thought that we're all part of it looking miserable. I just want to help them out a bit. <laughs> right, we'll be in the car. All right, love. <laughs> Coffee, please, Roy, and uh No, 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 I was going to order pizza cake, but better not. Ah. Sunday lunch is looming up. And uh, what's on the menu today? Shoulder of lamb, roast parsnips, broccoli. Oh, quite right, Ken. Well worth keeping an edge on the appetite for. Just the coffee. Yeah. Uh, did, did, did I leave a book in here? Oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry to push in, Ken. I've mislaid a book somewhere. And I've just got to know what happens in the end. I, I tell you, I won't sleep tonight unless I find it. Could it be Hard Grinding oh. by Mel Hutcher? Oh, that's it. Thank goodness you've found it. It's a wonderful read, Ken. I'll lend it to you when I've finished. Uh, there's no need, Norris. I got it out of the library when it was in hardback. Oh, then you'll know how terrific it is. Hey, but don't tell me what happens at the end. Well, I couldn't have wanted to. I got about as far as page ten, and then I thought, life is too short to persevere with this. You, you didn't like it? Oh, I think it's masterly. Well, I have to say, Norris, that I wasn't enthralled when I read the opening pages. <laughs> Yes, yes. Well, perhaps you're not much given to reading. Oh, I am, yes. I read a great deal. I've always got a book on the go. Oh, yes, yes. And what are you reading at present, then? Uh, branch Lines of the London, Midland and Scottish Railways, 1930 to 1947. <laughs> yes, well, with all respect, Roy, that's hardly high-class literary fiction, is it? Oh, possibly not, Norris, but neither is hard grinding. Oh, you Philistines, the pair of you. What is it you're reading, Norris? Let's have a look. Uh... In the grip of his strong arms, <laughs> Jessie felt her heart pounding, pounding, as her breath quickened, her magnificent bosom rose and fell. His strong, manly fingers ripped the taut silk of her... Norris! <laughs> yes, well, I, I can't stand here all day. Rita will be wondering where I've got to. Anyway, uh, I'll see you later. All right, God willing, my lord. Oh, hi, Sally. Oh, hi, Audrey. Sophie, aren't you?
You shooting up your son be astrology, ma'am? Oh, she will be when she's stood on these new trainers. You know the sort with the thick soles? That's what she's after. Yeah, well, everyone's got her. Oh, everybody but you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you then. See Bye, ma'am. Uh, Sophie, do you mind if I just have a word with your mum? It won't be a minute. What's up? Uh, how are you fixed for a quiet drink later on, just you and me? Fine, yeah. I mean, why? Is there something I need to know about? Not in front of the children, eh? This book oh, has everything... Oh, not your book again. Do you know he's driving me mad with this book? He keeps reading chunks of it out to me. What book is this? Oh, oh a hard grinding. Oh, it, it, it's a masterpiece, Blanche. Well, it's more than a book. It's a saga. Well, I love a good read, me. What's it about? Oh, life. It's, it's an epic tale of northern life in the hungry thirties, see? It, an unforgettable stirring, a mighty saga of passion and poverty. You see, Ken, it says so on the back. Well, of course it does, Norris. Have you ever seen a book blur that said this is rubbish, best yes, left done open? But you only read the first few pages. Now, you can't judge a masterpiece on it a It's film. nothing but a string of clichés and shot-worn images. Uh, lads, lads, I'd calm down. I'm going to have to read this book myself, cos I like to get into a good argument. So, could you hold the argy-bargy until I can get stuck in as well? Well, that's it. I think I feel a brainwave coming up. Just go and lie down till it passes over. No, no, no. no. What, what we need round here is, is, is a reading group. You know, all of us who enjoy a good read, well, we ought to get together, decide on a book we're going to read, and then we all read it, and then when we have, we, we, we discuss it. Over a drink. I second that. A great book should be sufficient intoxication in itself. Either it's over a drink, or I'm not joining. Dad, you're not supposed to dance. Why not? I have to type dancing, eh? I go on. Admit it, I am sensational, eh? What lesson? No way. Oh, Kevin, turn it down. You're not being yourself, thanks. Hey, Sal, you dancing? Uh, no, <sighs> not to that stuff, I'm not, thanks. Typical. Do you want to go to your house? Yeah, OK. Hey, do you like my new trainers? Yeah, I mean, like, whatever. The only thing's putting me. Oh, right, lady, I remember that. It's well is for you next time you need shoeing. Yeah, they're great, them so fair. Tell you what, take them off. And I'll spray them with that stuff what keeps them looking new. Thank you, Dad. <sighs> hey, you were moving good there, Kev. Yeah, well, I just thought I'd show out Rosie. An old man knows how to throw a few shapes. She likes you taking an interest, even if you'd sooner die than have <laughs> You're a brilliant dad. Oh, you reckon? I'm not a bad husband either, am I? Now, we all have to read the same book, yeah, right? Yeah. And then, next meeting, we discuss it, OK? Yeah. I propose our first choice should be Gone with the Wind. Yes, but we're here to discuss literature, not irritable bowel syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> Her and Tyrone have got engaged. I'm going to have to ring Mick and tell him, and he's going to be upset. Mind you, I think he's well shot of her. Oh, she looks really pretty there, don't she, Maria? That's what love does for you. I tell you, girl, when someone tells you they're mad about you, it's the most wonderful boost to your morale. It makes you feel brilliant. Oh, yeah. You told me someone fancies you. I bet I know who it is. No, you don't. I bet I do. It's your new boss, Ian Davenport. I knew something was going on from the way he was looking at you. Isn't that obvious? Anyway, I don't care. I was going to tell you. I need somebody to talk to, and there's only you I can trust. No sign of parole. I might have known you wouldn't manage out <laughs> nice. Hey. Yeah. Oh, hey, if this is another joke, I'm taking that back. No, you won't. It's brilliant that I've missed that. Oh, you see, you can do it when you try. <laughs> oh, they've put smiling. It's supposed to say stifling. Oh, is it? Come here. <laughs> mm. <laughs> hey, what? Well, it's a play, innit? Yeah, for looking at. Where's your bag? We're going to be late. Well, I'm sure your boss will be lenient with you if you are. Do you know what? I wish I hadn't said anything to you now. I thought I could trust you. Trust me how? Not to say anything to anybody, cos you can trust that. But trust me not to have an opinion on what you're doing. 
Oh, come on, then, if we're so late. Hey, watch your lip and get in the car. I know what I'm doing. In my head, I'm thinking, right, I'm not going to look at the time till the end of this video. And then I can't help myself. And then I'm gutted because it's only gone about 20 seconds or six calories or something. Well, you must be much fitter than me. I'd be too worried about trying to breathe and do it, Matt. <laughs> What's this? Oh, I'm just talking about my love-hate relationship with the treadmill. Oh, may that hate hate. You're always smug, though, haven't you, Ben? Yeah, not really. Oh, don't go till I've come back from this meeting, though, will you? I thought you were going first thing. What time's your rep coming? Dinner time-ish. We could be back by then. I'm dead nervous about it. Is that stupid? Hey! I said you could be back by then, couldn't you? Uh, Sunita's got a lot to prove, what with this vote thing on Wednesday. She's got to show them that she can be a boss. Yeah, but I'm bound to give away I'm just the shop girl. Hey, that's your shop now, just as much as is. Go on, I'll be here. You shouldn't let her manipulate you. Manipulate me? Yeah. Give over, she's nervous, that's all. Sophie! Guests first! She's so completely selfish. Has Gemma seen your poetry? What poetry? Uh, Gemma, would you like that sausage? Wouldn't mind. I had no breakfast. My mum wasn't up and my dad's starting leaving for work too early to do it. Hmm. Can't you get your own breakfast? These do, if I'm busy. Suppose, but she always used to do it before. Before what? Before she started crying all the time. Crying? Yeah, she's got crybaby-itis. <laughs> That's why I didn't want to come home for dinner. Hey, are you around later? Only I want to drop my prezi in. What is it? Surprise! I've got a surprise for you and all. I've blagged a paid drive down to Cardiff on Wednesday. How do you fancy it? Me? It's one of the universities you're interested in. Cardiff. I thought we could check the place out. What, this Wednesday? What, what about school? Well, I'll phone them, on Oh, no, don't phone the... Ugh, say no. How do you know? I've gone off Cardiff anyway, and I've got to think where Martin would get a job. Platt's got a job. Anyway, people get just as ill in Wales as they do here. There's loads of hospitals. I don't fancy it. What if it's right for you? You're going to turn it down just because Platt don't fancy the uniform? I don't want to go, all right? Davenport, Sally speaking. How can I help? Oh, hi, Justine. Um, no, uh, he's in a meeting. Um... Oh, hang on a sec. I think he's finished. In touch, Andrew. Great, OK. Take care, man. Justine. How does she sound? I'll take it in there. Just putting you through, Justine. No... No, look, you're jumping to conclusions. I wouldn't keep something like that from you, would I? Well, I'd have confessed, you know me. Look, look, I'll buy another one, Saturday. All right? Yeah. Yeah, OK. Yeah, I I'll see you later. Oh, um, I might be a bit late. I've got a couple of things to attend to. Yeah, yeah, all right. Bye. Well, if she's that concerned about a broken vase, I don't really think she suspects anything more serious going on anywhere, do you? But what about all that crying, though, that Gemma were on about? Sally, Justine is a... a complex woman. Complex? Moody. If something's bothering her, she has to say it, show it. So something is bothering her? She's probably got tired of the colour of the living room carpet. Oh, Ian, this is serious. Whatever's bothering her was bad enough for her to upset Gemma. I'm sorry, I am taking this seriously, but you don't know Justine. I'm not kidding, the slightest thing, she's all over the place. It's no wonder Gemma gets the wrong impression. But you could hardly accuse Justine of being discreet. The thing is, it's the packaging what sells it anyway. I should be allowed to take that into consideration. Yeah, but we won't sell it twice unless it tastes good. You're not going to play a trick on me, are you? Feed me some horrible or something. What, like what? Like... Frogspawn or something like that. Where would I get that from? No, I'm not. Now, <laughs> open wide. <laughs> oh! Mm, that's nice. Be another 20 minutes on the treadmill at this rate. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Are oh. you at the gym? Um, she's helping me choose some <laughs> snacks for the shop. You 
force feeding her. Don't be so daft. <laughs> you know how hard she's working. Charlie, I, was, I, I just wanted her to... You wanted her to fail. Of course you didn't, Charlie. No? Just because there's no skin on your bones, you can't stand the fact that she is getting her body in shape, can you? Charlie, don't talk to Sunita like that. You can't see it, can you? I'm She's just jealous. A tiny bit. Jealous. 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 Spiteful and selfish. Go on, eat it. Hope it makes you sick. I don't remember the last time he used more than three place settings. Yeah. You shouldn't have spent so much. Special occasion, isn't it? Dipped into the university fund, did you? I'm sorry about uh, the Cardiff thing. No, it's fine. Your dad didn't uh, mean to have reacted, you love. Should have given you more notice. Uh, it weren't the notice that were the problem, would it? So I might not go to Cardiff University. Big deal. Um, Tommy, why don't you open us another bottle of wine? We've still got time for another glass. It's not Martin's fault, you know. Oh, of course it is. Look, Tom, just let things lie, eh? Don't ruin our evening. I am letting it lie. I'm letting him sit there, aren't I? Katie's not decided where she wants to go yet, but I'm sure... That and when she does, it'll be about what's best for her. Yeah, of course. Of course. Listen to him. What? What? Do you think I'm holding her back? Tom, either get the wine or we're going out. Well, let's go out, then. I've had one drink with him. I think that's enough. Why do you have to be so nasty? Right, that is it. That's enough. I'm really sorry, Katie. Martin would never stop me doing what is best for me, you know. Which would be to study as far away from him as possible. Once we kid your own age, you won't even give him a second glance. Tom, you reckon? Yeah. Well, guess what? I might not be going to university at all. You what? Okay, not Leave it, Katie. No, they should know. I might not go to university. And you know why? Because I'm pregnant. I don't expect you to be happy about it. Just thought you should know, that's all. Well, obviously, you've decided to keep it, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Yeah, well, obviously. Because we have, haven't we? Yeah. You're going to be grandparents. Congratulations. <sighs> Look, I know it's come as a bit of a shock. Oh, but... it's not a shock to me. I've been expecting it. I would have put money on it. I knew it was going to happen, and now it has. You've told us. We know. You've got it off your chest. Now get out of my house. And that's it, is it? Yeah, that's it. Nothing more to say? No. Aye, OK, let's go. Stay where you are. Angela, if that man stays in my house another second, I will kill him. Look, maybe we should give you some time Nobody's to cool down. Nobody's going to kill anybody. Nobody's going to hit anybody. We're going to sit down. And we're going to talk about this like adults. How dare you? How dare you talk to my best friend like that? Who do you think you are, eh? And who do you think I am? You treat me like a kid sometimes and I'm sick of it. I am sick of you interfering in my life. I know what I'm doing. I'm not stupid. So, I want to try a few snacks with my friend. So what? I'll make up for it tomorrow in the gym, OK? OK. Get out of a poncy thing like that. I want a mug. Look, just keep your cool, that's all I ask, OK? <sighs> If they think buying us a few fancy plates, they're going to win us round. Can you just keep your cool? I am not having things ending up like the last time they dropped a bombshell on us. It only makes things worse. Have you never just blurted some out in the heat of the moment? Well, don't you think I had a right to some saying when Here you told me? Thanks a lot. Cheers, Mum. They reckon it tastes better out of China. I'd prefer a mug myself. <laughs> you can say that again. I am not a mug. I knew exactly what I was doing. Sort of plan, then. Of course it will. So what's the big rush? Well, I can see why he's in a rush. Nobody wants to be kicking a ball around a park in a Zimmer frame. He's only 36. And you're only 18. Mum wasn't much older when she had me. That was an accident. It wasn't planned. Your mum didn't have somebody twice her age twisting her arm. Hang about. No one was twisting anyone's arm. He didn't have to. We both wanted it. And that is the difference. God, no wonder you gave me such a hard time if you never wanted me in the first place. Of course we wanted you. But our baby will be more loved than I ever was. Because we have wanted it from the word go. Come on, you don't mean that. Yeah, I do. No, you don't. Now, just shut up and let me say something. Look, she doesn't mean that. And no mum and dad could love the kids more than you two do. Well, it's true, and you know it. And so do I. 
And I also know what you're going through. I mean, I've been through it with our Sarah, and let yeah. me tell you. Yeah, 18 is not to your family, is Please, it? Please, Tommy, just let me say this, will you? I know Katie's young, but... Well, she's right. She's not much younger than you were, Ange, when you had her. But look what a great job you've done on her. I love the girl that you brought up. And I think that she'll make just as good a job of it as you did. You're in a hurry, aren't you? <laughs> hey, take it easy, mate. If you were the only girl in the world, I wouldn't touch you with a ten-foot cattle prod, you filthy cow. So why don't you take your knock-off razors and slit your worthless wrists with them? I'm only trying to earn a living. There's no need for that, man. No need. You pulled that point yet? That were quick. How long does it take to chuck out a smackhead? Should be on the house, sis. Just been doing your job for you. And what job's that, then? Getting rid of undesirables. It's a speciality in life. You'll have to move. It's only one flight. Plenty of families live in flats. No, oh, no, she's right. And we have talked about it. We will have to move. OK, we'll move. Can you afford to? Martin's got a job. And we're not going to be going out as much, are we? <laughs> so I suppose university's dead in the water now, is it? Well, not necessarily. It is going to be hard. But she could still do it. I'll be there, I'll support her. But you'll have to stay local, cos if you're both out working, then who's going to look after the baby? Well, there's nurseries and creches and stuff. You have to provide all that stuff these days. Look, there's no need for her education to suffer. Oh, so she's going. Only she said she wasn't before. Oh, look, Tommy, I wanted to get her qualifications just as much as you do. But no one wants the rest of her life to come to an end just cos she's having a baby. The rest of my life is just about to start. Katie, you don't seem to realise how difficult it is. Well, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I mean, maybe she'll have to put it off for a year. Will you no. all stop trying to plan my life out for me? Well, it's going to change forever. We've got a plan for it. Right, well, why don't I just go home and leave you three to work it all out for me, oh, then, yeah? Well, sit down and stop being so childish. I am not being childish. Yes, you are, to sit down. Well, shut up! I am not a baby anymore. You'll always be my baby. Oh, yeah. The one you never wanted. <laughs> oh, God, I'm so sorry! Right. I'll go after her. No, you stay there. I'll go. Oh, tell her I'm sorry, girl, to come back. <laughs> Will you leave me alone? Will you stop and listen? Look, if you have this baby, then you'll understand. You'll see how me and your man feel. You and our Craig are the best thing that's ever happened to us from the minute you were born. It's only ever been about you two. You go out and all you ever really talk about are your kids. You get up on a cold, dark morning, middle of winter, to go to work, and you do it to feed your kids. What do you want? A medal? No, no, all... All I've ever wanted to do is protect you, to look after you, to watch you grow and, and thrive. That's all. And to see that you get the best education you can get to get a good job and be happy. I am happy. I'm happy with Martin. You can't trust a 36-year-old man who moves in on a 16-year-old schoolgirl. A man like that's got no self-control. He gives in to his lowest, dirtiest instincts. I don't even know him. You know nothing about him! Don't you see? He's got you right where he wants you. You're going to go off to university, probably be out every night, mixing with kids your own age. He's going to be stuck at home, on his own, terrified of losing you. <laughs> so what does he do? The oldest trick in the book. He gets you up the spout, so you're chained to him forever. Oh, don't fall for it, Katie. You haven't got a clue, have you? All I'm saying is you don't have to go through it, not yet. I want to go through with it. Now, leave me alone. Just get on with the rest of your life. Live a little, have some fun. If you're still together in a couple of years, then fair enough. Have a baby. I'll be with him, all right. Things change. He's the first fella you've ever been out with, really, isn't he? You were Mum's first. And just because she made a mistake... Don't mean I am. You'll be buying us plates in 20 years' time, Dad. So he's marrying you? Yeah, one day. And you won't even be invited. Now move your foot! I'll be there for her. I won't let her down, I promise you. You better not. Is she with you? No. Get out.
Am I forgiven? Yeah, of course. 